Good evening, everyone. I'm back. Uh, it, it's been a while. So last week, my power was out for like almost five days. It got knocked out Sunday afternoon and it was back Thursday afternoon. So I guess four days. And the week before that, I was sick. So instead of my normal 16 hours of streaming I would have done during that time, I did about two. So uh, I'm back now. I'm super stoked to be back. And I'm stoked to be back with such an awesome topic to cover, which is Blue White Delver. So I've been in a Blue White Delver group text for the past couple of weeks, a bunch of people preparing for Star City Syracuse. And uh, Harlan was the uh, one of the biggest proponents of this deck. He won the Classic in Baltimore with it. And uh, there's, there's two builds. There's Harlan's build, which is like this deck which is just a stone blade deck but it has some delvers and dazes in it to hedge a little bit towards combo in the main deck because the deck building cost of doing this isn't that high and then uh there's the other build which has niv magus elemental and four fluster storms in the main which is kind of a pile and i don't think it's good after testing it for a while but i do think this version is very good uh, Harlan, uh, first place and fourth place in the past two Star City events he played with this. It's a pretty good record. I'm going to pull this up. So right here we got the uh, Star City deck list. And they did this awesome thing this time where they published all of the day two deck lists. It was all the way down to 69. Nice. So, so many deck lists to, to peruse if you're interested. But uh, we're... We're checking out Harlan's deck tonight. I'm copying his 75 straight up. I've been playing this deck on stream. You can go back and look at the VODs probably if they're still up. Uh, all of the iterations of this and sideboard decisions I've made and stuff. But tonight I'm playing Harlan 75 straight up. Uh, he, the deck had been playing three days and one spell snare and sideboarding the second spell snare. He moved the second snare straight into the main, which is great. That's where it belongs. Spell snare is awesome in Legacy right now. And that freed up some sideboard slots. Uh, I convinced him to play a Celestial Purge because it's incredible in Legacy. It's so good. This hits so many permanents right now that you're otherwise in trouble to, like Merit Lage or Liliana the Last Hope. Or uh, the other day I exiled a Hazard at the Fervent. <laughs> This thing hits some some good stuff. It, it hits sneak attack if it's ever just if they ever have to dangle it out there. So th this is a sweet pile of cards. Blue white is really good. So we're gonna start on this. But before we do, let's check out this deck that I found. Uh, let me see if I can find it real quick. This is my friend Doug McKay, who is a deck building genius. He doesn't think about the game on any kind of level that I've seen in anyone else ever and this deck is called Grixis Phoenix but it's actually sorry uh, you probably can't see this very well on stream it, it's not popping up real big but you'll notice Tendrils of Agony is also in this deck so is Lion's Eye Diamond. Uh, Doug found the intersection of uh, the four Thoughtsies, four Cabal or four Thoughtsies Four Cabal Therapy, Dark Ritual, uh, a bunch of duresses. The Phoenix deck was playing all those cards anyway. And then instead of like Young Pyromancer as his backup win condition, he just has Tendrils of Agony. He can storm off. He added Lion's Eye Diamond. Like, this is some, a Storm Phoenix deck. Check that deck out. That was 12th place in the Classic. So he top 16 with this in the Legacy Classic. He is awesome. I won my first ever pro point playing a Doug McKay deck at a Legacy Grand Prix. He's very smart. Check it out. 
That deck might be too smart for me, though. Like, I, I don't think I could play that deck. Possibly ever. Uh, no way I could navigate that. But Doug finds a way. Here's what we're doing tonight. I'm going to get into this league because hopefully we can have time for a second league tonight because I do want to try Grixis Delver. It's really popular on Magic Online. It's really popular among uh, people who don't play a lot of Legacy but are good at Magic, like, like pros who pick up Legacy for the weekend when they have to. Grixis Delver is a popular choice among people like that. And for good reason. It's just like a rock-solid deck full of cantrips. Lots of decisions to make. But uh, Blue White Delver is where we're going to start. And I have a... Uh, I'm no slouch with Grixis Delver myself. I have a uh, Legacy Champs Top 8 with Grixis Delver. And I have three Star City Classic Top 8s with a win with Grixis Delver as well. So I, I'm no stranger to Grixising people out. But I think blue white's really good these days. Let's start there. We're also in, it's it's crunch time to get some play points. Uh, the legacy qualifier points. All of the uh, the first quarter season championships are coming up this month. Uh, that's the uh, modern popper vintage and legacy path to the pro tour. There's a uh, quarterly qualifying tournament for the PTQ. And then at the end of the year, there'll be one PTQ for each format where the winner goes to the actual Pro Tour playing just whatever wonky format they're into. And I'm into Legacy, so that's what we're doing. All right, Windswept Heath. This could be... I was going to say it could be Miracles, but not anymore. All right, so... Mother of Runes, I am not going to force a will this card. I think we can do better. The best thing is just drawing Plow right now. All right, didn't happen. All right, that does answer Mother of Runes, though. This hand's pretty good, though, against uh, any sort of Mother of Runes deck. Spell Snare is super strong. Like, they're going to want to play Athalia, Stoneforge, Mystic, Gaddock Teague, something like that at some point in this game. And I'm going to nab it. And then Stoneforge is the best card in the matchup on both sides. This hand gets to fetch basics. I'm into it. So anyway, the uh, quarterly challenges for each of the, the formats. You need 35 qualifier points in that format to play in the, the quarterly qualifier. And I currently have 22, 23. I'll, I'll check, but uh, I got about two weeks to... Uh, rack up the remaining points, which shouldn't be too hard. I just need to actually put into the grind. I normally only play on stream. As uh, weekends are for, for traveling in general, but I have no traveling events on my calendar for March. I am going to be home on my grind. I suspect my opponent is double queuing. All of these decisions have taken a long time. Oh, disconnected. Maybe they're in there, that's just wonky. Look at this mana base, though. This uh, land box Dominaria Plains and this full art Amonkhet or Hour of Devastation, uh, Nicol Bolas Forest. Ooh. I, I don't think less of anyone who actually can afford sweet lands in, in real life or on Moto, but I do take notice of it. I, I do believe that is worth the investment to have sweet looking lands. In this deck, I have the basics I actually play in real life. Uh, I have, I, I use beta basics for legacy most of the time. Oh, well, the opponent's disconnected. Let's look at some more of that Star City day two list. All right, so that's Harlan. Is it Delver 1? So this one has four Terramanders and three Light Up the Stage for new cards. They're not playing Skewer the Critics, which is probably smart. That card's not actually that great. Uh, Terramander I have been thoroughly unimpressed with, but it does fit right into this deck. It's a one-drop flyer that turns on Light Up the Stage. 
So uh, it, you kind of need it, even though you're not excited about it. It's kind of an inside out Tomb Stalker. Uh, Tomb Stalker is a 5-5 five five that you can't cast until your graveyard is full. But it arrives rock solid as a 5-5. Five five. This arrives early as fragile as possible. Just a 1-1 one one blue card. Dies to all removal spells plus red blast. But later in the game it becomes a 5-5. Five five. Spell snaring Thalia always feels incredible. So I get to play Stoneforge Mystic here. I'm going to get Umazawa's Jite, and then I get to protect it with Force of Will. Yeah, I'm going to get Jite and not Batter Skull because Batter Skull just gets bricked by this mom. Stoneforge Mystic of their own. So. The Mother of Runes changes all the math here. Like that's, we have three cards in hand. Yeah, I am gonna force this and I'm gonna pitch the other force to do it. What is happening? Oh, Magic Online is being super wonky for me right now. It's unclear what's happening. All right, I can move stuff around. But I can't seem to actually cast my spell. Oh, no. This is awful. All right, I'm going to have to... Log out, log back in. Oh my god. No, I don't want to do that. <laughs> just going to reboot this. Maybe that's what my opponent was just doing. Maybe Moto was weird for them too. I don't want to force pitching Spell Pierce because I think Spell Pierce will get me, will be good for a one for one later. And I don't want to set myself up to get two for ones twice by holding the second force back. <laughs> uh, yeah, Grat. Grat, uh, searching for Shuko would certainly confuse my opponents. All right, let's back this up, make sure I'm doing it all correctly. All right, boom, boom. Yeah, I think I'll be able to spell Pierce a Green Sun Zenith or a hard cast equipment or something later. I mean, if they plow right now, that's fine. Uh, I'm not excited about getting plowed right now, but it's better than fighting over this Stoneforge Mystic when they have Mother of Runes in play. Uh oh. Mom re mom. The double mom pile is tough. I'm going to need a true name nemesis to break through this. Land? Yes. All right, that worked out really well. All right, so they have two cards in hand. I don't know what I need to do yet, so I'm just going to hold on to this brainstorm. Like, all of my cards in hand are pretty good. I can hold up Spell Pierce for a Zenith. I hope they're not main decking choke. That would be pretty savage. But if they are, I could choke them. This deck plays six basics. So I, I get to be pretty much protection from Wasteland. All right, get a Teague. I don't care a whole lot about that. It turns off Force of Will and hard casting Batter Skull and Jace. If this resolves, though, it's just in play for the rest of the game. I, I got nothing to say about it because of these two moms. And I could counsel judgment it. All right, I'm going to see what happens here. All right, I got found the spell snare. That was like the best thing I could have found. 
I am going to have to shuffle two things away if I want to snare this, though. So the question is, do I care about it? All right, swords to plowshares can go because it's never resolving from, with, between these two moms. And do I care about this third, fourth land? Oh, yes, I do, because I have to fetch basic island here, and then I'm going to need basic planes to cast Council of Judgment. So... I, I guess now, like, the question is, do I care about Gadok Teague? Now that I have Spell Snare in my hand, I could hit a Stoneforge Mystic with this, or a Thalia, a Zenith for one. It's really only stopping Jace and Force of Will, and it, two Forces are already out of my deck. All right. I am just going to let this resolve. resolves and I do want to draw that land on top of my deck so I hope they don't make me fetch right now all right that one is uh that one's not particularly beatable all right so I I lost the uh so here's that spell pierce I was talking about like if I had pitched the spell pierce to force earlier then I wouldn't be able to do that now. It sucked getting rid of my uh, second basic planes there with the fetch, but we got ways to get more. Better than just losing straight up to Sylvan Library. All right. Didn't want that second spell pierce at all, <laughs> but there it is. All right, so they can't cast Green Sun Zenith because of Teague. They can start beating down, like just chunking in for two a turn. I can spell Snare an Umazawa's GTA. I can spell Pierce a Sword of Fire and Ice. Yeah, they don't even have to mom this thing up it can just get in for two not gonna block i wish i could surprise him with the batter skull but don't have it true name nemesis all right that's not a true name True name is my best draw, my, and it will be for the rest of the game. I'm not going to attack because they could double block and just kill my Stoneforge for free, or they could just single block and brick it. So I don't have an attack yet. Engineered Explosives out of the board is going to be pretty sweet here. I also need to be paying attention to the clock because this matchup is going to take a long time. No matter what happens, I'm going to... I'm in this for the long haul. Yeah, this is really tough, the, this double mom. I need a true name nemesis or a brainstorm real quick. Now caster mage, what do you do? You cast brainstorm. I'm interested in that, but I'll hold on to it. I can end step that just as fine, just as well, and still leave up all my counter magic. And Vivian Reed would be a hell of a magic card. <laughs> be pretty messed up to put in your deck. All right, so I'm going to brainstorm here, and then I'm going to fetch and spell snare this Thalia. I have to do it in this order because I, I want the shuffle off the brainstorm. True name. All right, days is a brick, and I don't need another island at all. Spell snare is so good. I'm so excited that there's two in the main deck. 
That's good stuff. Found another brainstorm. So I got a lot of looks at another true name here. All right, so I could make a, a power play here. I could block, and if they tap this Mother of Runes to save Gaddock Teague, and I draw white, I can vote this Mother of Runes off the island. I think that's worth doing. Because this Brainstorm, if it finds a white source, that also opens this up. I get super punished if they have another two drop here, though. But what are you going to do? All right, didn't have it. Come on, white source or true name. Days is not what I want. Come on, white source. White source, yes, and true name. We did it all. All right, so days and spell pairs can take a hike. Basic planes. Right. If they have plow, they get to live another turn, but then I jam true name. Plow is a likely card that they have based on the way they played this game. All right, they just have nothing. That's great. Maybe their hand is full of green sun zeniths. Just locked out by their own Teague. Yeah, usually if you connect with GTA, that, that gets the ball rolling. Oh, I hope Batter Skull's in their hand. Womp womp. All right, cool. So now I get to attack into this Teague. They'll probably snap block it. To unlock their hand full of spells. They're so smart, but I have Jace the Mind Sculptor in my hand. I could also Snapcaster, or I could just jam True Name. Let's see. Uh, so I could hold up Snapcaster, which is basically Demonic Tutor. I have Spell Snare, Spell Pierce, and Brainstorm there already. I could also just jam Jace and start pulling ahead. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It, it was a real question. Like, is Jace better than my three-drop creature? I think another land is more important than this Delver. So that's my plan. And I can snap Council's Judgment now if they just jam Batter Skull. I don't really want them to Zenith for Reclamation Sage or a Kasali Pride Mage, but it's likely to occur. All right, so they're going to get their thing. It's going to kill my GTA. And then we get to run away with Jace. All right, Knight of Autumn. That makes sense. All right, so this is dead. And I gain two life. Unfortunately, GTA is gone now. Uh, we could have played around that by holding up the Snapcaster. But if... I don't know. I, I like pulling ahead here, just running away with this game. Now they had to spend a turn dealing with that, and Jace gets to run amok. Wow. Look at all these cards. All right, so... I don't need this Flooded Strand, and I kind of want this Stoneforge Mystic. Plow's going to be super important. Snap, Yeah, Plow Snap Plow's really important. I can just put them back like this, cast True Name this turn. So now I'm holding up Snapcaster or whatever I want, and I can draw the Stoneforge next turn. Now this hand answers most things they might do. 
and the true name is just great. Another land, hardcast batter skull. Come on, let's do it. Hardcast batter skull, give me a spell pierce. So the converted mana cost of this card is three. X equals two. Maybe ooze. I have plow for that though. Scrib Ranger. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Protection from blue is pretty strong, but this has protection from you, which sounds like blue, but is actually a lot better. Knight of the Reliquary. That's fine. On lock. Get out of here, Knight. Jace, continue to bury my opponent. Don't need these lands. Stoneforge is going to shuffle for us. I'm just going to attack with this because I can get Batter Skull with this Stoneforge, then put it in with this one and cheat a turn off of the uh, Batter Skull math. My opponent is Hellbent. And we have Snapcaster and pretty much complete control of this game. Whoa, Grath, thanks for the, the bits. You are now firmly in first place in the, the bit war. Right, so they get to chunk Jace for two if they want it here. I don't care about that. I can deal with that next turn easily. I have the snap plow. This turn I want batter skull in play. Boom. Oh geez. This is so under control that I'm just gonna plus them. So that undoes their last turn. They spent last turn getting Jace down to one. Now it's back up to three. Uh, no, I am not going to bottom that card because I don't care about it. Get to crush. All right, they're at eight. They're going to draw Thalia. Might as well ponder while the getting's good. Wow. All right, that should lock it up. They they just have no more ability to do anything this game. So if I plow Ranger, they go to nine. Or if they, yeah, if I plow Ranger, they go to nine. If I plow Thalia, they go to 11. And they, they came to the same conclusion I did. Yep, Jace the Mind Sculptor. There was one turn where it may or may not have been right to jam it. Like, we could have saved our Umazawa's Jute if we didn't jam Jace, but then we won easily by jamming Jace. Like, it cost us Jite. It's a, one of those sacrifice plays, like, lose your bishop to kill their queen. Like, that's just a line we had to take. All right, Force of Will is not great in this matchup. I never like having zero in basically any matchup, but all of my permanent base destruction, and the third true name is in the board, Days is real bad. <laughs> uh, Grad is uh, reminiscing about magic stories. Traveling adventures. Most of my best memories involve magic. So, uh, one thing about this deck that might not be intuitive on first glance is that it's a really bad Delver deck and it's a really solid Stone Blade deck. So I took out my dazes. Like we're gonna play a long fair game of magic against this opponent. So I cut my dazes and I shaved the Delvers down. Like I have one left because I don't want to bring in any of these other cards. 
Like none of these other cards matter. But I like all these main deck cards. I have one Delver left for the cheese factor, but otherwise we're just basically now full stone blade. The blue white Delver is gone. We're just blue white stone blade. I, I'm a big fan of containment priest against the Aether Vial Green Slim Zenith deck. Uh, I like Gideon as just like a big sticky threat that poops out card advantage. Just the more permanence I have in play, the better against this sort of matchup. Engineered explosives uh, can help us solve our mom problem if they do a similar thing they did the last game. They're going to have chokes this game too. Is Vile unusual out of Maverick? Aren't they a Vile deck? Are they not anymore? Has the deck adapted? They used to be a Vile deck. Though, I, I, I'm talking about like 2011. So, does the deck just not play Vile anymore? Alright, th this is like a slow hand, but fine. We have our best card. Alright, maybe there's no Vials, that's fine. I still like the uh, the priest against just Green Sun Zenith. That's enough. I would bring it in against one or the other, and they might have both, but I don't know. All right. They're they're not draw. Uh, they scryed to the bottom. They're on six, and they scryed to the bottom. Bummer. Noble hierarch just ruined my life. All right, it, it's fine though. I could fetch now so I don't get got by uh, Avon Mind Sensor, but if they're playing that, they deserve it. Like that, that's a card I'd be truly surprised to see in a deck. So, more McGill, funny story. Uh, although I'm sure you know because you're smart, this was a deck, this was a tier one legacy deck before Deathrite Shaman was even printed. And this deck was really, really good. Like, before Deathrite Shaman even existed, this deck was super playable. All right, so they missed their land drop and they cast Thalia. So here's my plan. I'm going to waste their one land. And then I'm going to play Explosives for zero, which is actually one, because I have to pay for Thalia. All right, so X is zero, but one mana went into it. So we have a one-turn window here where if they don't draw land, we get to send them into the Stone Age. And if they do draw land, we're going to be a little disappointed we made this play. And then we're going to have to beat Thalia somehow. Let's just, the good news is they can't cast another Hierarch because it would also die. Yeah, Terminus killed Maverick. That is a true statement. All right, so now they are, they're empty. And I can start to set up a, a line where I, End step, Snapcaster, untap, GTA them out of the game. Oh, Brainstorm is a good card. I think I'm more interested in Delver, though. So I could Brainstorm, fetch, then cast Delver. That sounds good. That means I don't get to... I don't get to know what's on top of my deck, but I do get to put a threat into play. Yeah, I remember you were on Maverick for a while, Mormagill. Just from your Moto photos you posted on Facebook. Alright, so they're creeping back into this game. Hopefully GTA is going to connect any minute now. Put us back into easy mode. Alright, come on, Delver, do your thing. Flooded Strand, nope. Alright. Now I have a fun decision to make. Do I plow Thalia or Noble Hierarch? And I think the answer is Noble Hierarch. Yeah, so plow Noble Hierarch. 
and then I can counter any two drop. Like if they draw another land and jam a two drop, I can spell snare it. And if they don't do that, I can just GTA equip, connect, and dead. We're going to be at six, but whatever. Signed up for that. Maybe Delver Weaveman flip. That would be great. Yep, a forest. So this is the one Delver in the deck going off with one of the three Wastelands in the deck. All right, I'm actually going to play out this Wasteland. I'm going to save my shuffle for when I might want it in the future. They might just concede to this, though. They probably should, but what do I know? I'm not the Maverick expert here. So I'm... Oh, bummer. That bounces Thalia if they want to do that. Whatever. I'm not going to not kill Thalia. Yeah, Wasteland for Caracas. Yes, yes, yes. Said it's waiting for my opponent to pay costs. What are they doing? They're casting swords to plowshares. Yeah, deal. So now the board is going to be all of these lands, Snapcaster in hand versus Forest. I'm feeling okay about this one, team. Uh-oh, a land. If only my hand contained Spell Snare for whatever this is. All right, I'm going to Snapcaster and then Brainstorm and then Spell Snare. Because I'm going to do all this anyway. And if I draw like Spell Pierce instead, I'd rather use that. Wow, what do you get for the man who has everything? Pack it up, opponent. We're done. And I'm going to draw this card. I want a Council Judgment in my hand for later. And then I'm going to... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2. And then for my other 3 mana, I'll deploy True Name Nemesis. I have to choose a player. Yeah, I'm not sure how they get out of this, if it's even possible. Yeah, didn't think so. Yeah, so we're, we're basically doing the same thing. Like, we were racing to get GTA online, but I have blue cards in my deck and they don't. Like, all of my cards resolved and very few of theirs did. Like, none that I care about. So that, that worked out really well. Alright, next victim. Let's play against Maverick again. So that was that was nice. Oh more Miguel, I got back into my match and missed the end of your story where uh <laughs> you killed Jolisa with an Obnixilis ultimate. That's great. I have ultimated Obnixilis in my life. I assume you mean the one where uh, they get an emblem that uh whenever they draw a card they lose two life. Uh I have ultimated that card in the in my life and it's unbeatable like most decks want to draw cards and unless they're wildly ahead on board which if they were on head on board obnixilis would not have ultimated like one of the modes on that card is murder just destroy target creature so if obnixilis is going up instead of down they don't have a board presence like almost by definition I just saw uh, Otis Firefly. That is my dude, Seth, from uh, back in the day in my college play group. Uh, he was playing Legacy back when Stoneblade was indeed the tits. Uh, that, that was about the era that uh, we were traveling around playing a lot of Legacy money tournaments. 
40 duels tournaments back when 40 duels was like a 1k instead of a, a 40k. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to keep this. Basic Island Ponder is the nut draw. Like, I'll keep most hands with a Ponder in them. Uh, I don't know if Seth ever came up to Pitt, uh, Penn State. He might have been on the road with me for some PTQs. So I know I said I like this Ponder, and I do. But because this hand also has days, I'm going to jam Delver. Like, let's pretend we're a Delver deck just a little bit. We're going to be really happy we did this if they're any sort of combo deck. Which they might be. This uh, Ponder is fine. I'm going to hold on to... I'm not going to daze this, though. Like, I'll, I'll wait for a real spell. They could be Miracles, in which case I want to daze the Counterbalance, or... I'll get some value out of days eventually. Flip, 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 flip. Yeah, baby. Flip revealing brainstorm. My opponent just pooped their pants. Bummer. My opponent just got a lot happier. Land. All right. That didn't work. It's all right. Our hand's still full of cantrips. We have days. If they have, like, planes, sorts of plowshares right here, though, it's going to suck. Oh, Redland. All right, so they could be sneak and show. Uh, the storm usually doesn't play a volcanic island, or they might, but they usually don't fetch it this early. I don't know. Uh, my bet's on sneak and show right now. The like fetching volcanic island on purpose, like miracles would have gotten tundra there if they really wanted a non-basic land. So, uh, I'm smelling a combo deck. They could just be blue-red Delver with a terrible draw, but they would have pondered with their island, not with their Valk, in case they found the Bolt. Yeah, Vivian is sweet technology for Maverick, if that's the direction those decks go in. Alright, let's go ponder. How about a land? I have Days and Force of Will now, that's good. Hey... This is super risky, but I'm doing it. I'm just going to pretend we're a Delver deck. And hope they're a combo deck. Or hope they're just dead. He's busy narrating. Uh, chose to shuffle with Ponder. Yeah, they, they, drew, they drew wild off that last Ponder. So hopefully they're just kind of screwed. Uh-oh. Blooded Strand. Right, so I know my top two cards are both Delver of Secrets. I could brainstorm looking for another land. I get to see two fresh cards. I think that's worth doing. Come on, land. Uh-oh. Are we going to get in a day's fight? Impulse. So this is definitely show and tell at this point. Sure, I'll let them impulse. I would really like to find a land here, though. That's that's going to be clutch. All right, we did it. Umazawa's GTA is not what we're looking for in this matchup, and I don't need two Stoneforge Mystics. I have two points of interaction here, and Delver's Delver's crunching. Rut row. Show and tell. Force of will. Wow, <laughs> that that just totally worked. All right, they get to preordain. They bottom bottomed off that preordain. That's fun. I would not be mad about a wasteland here. Ooh, I'm not mad about spell pierce either. Actually, pretty stoked about it. What's up, Mormagil? You didn't expect to see force?
Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised that their show and tell just landed right in the graveyard. Though they have shuffled every ponder and bottomed every preordain this game. They're digging frantically. Uh, that's one of the things that keeps me off playing show and tell decks. That, like, their hand right now could just be, like, three Grizzle Brands, three Emmer Colds, and uh, a sneak attack. Like, uh, and, like, decks that lose to themselves that hard. Like, he's cast one, two, three, four cantrips, and then just died. I played most of that game on one land. So remember on turn one when I said we're going to be really happy we cast Elver on turn one if they're a combo deck? That's totally why we just won this game. Yeah, show, show and tell decks, uh, I don't know. They, they don't do it for me, but, I mean, you got to live your best life, whoever you are. All right, so Fluster Storm is one of the best cards. <laughs> well, Mormigil, we're not all as skilled as you. Mormigil is saying he defeated a show and tell opponent who made turn two omniscience. All right, so I want all of my permission. I want to keep in some swords to plowshares because they're going to bring in uh, Arcane Artisan. Spell Snare does not do much against their deck. Spell Pierce is phenomenal. Fluster Storm is phenomenal. And then, what else we got here? All right, the Stoneforge Mystic can get package can get shaved down. We don't need a GTA, so like two Mystics and one Batter Skull is where I usually like to be. Uh, Jace is great. So, I like Disenchant. It can kill an Omniscience or a, a Sneak Attack if they get just hung out there. Celestial Purge can kill a, a Sneak Attack or a Grizzlebrand, but Grizzlebrand's going to draw 14 in response. I don't really want that to be the plan. And I have two Plows if that is the reality we live in. Uh, the True Name's not great. Jace is important to turn the corner. I could bring in one Surgical. I, I don't hate Surgical. Like, if you counter the first show and tell, you can clip the rest of them. Or you can just, like, look at their hand, like, hit a ponder, look at their hand, see what's going on. Like, they have eight ways to win the game, or they have eight enablers and eight payoffs in their whole deck. So if you can, a, a Resolve Surgical can clip a quarter of their plan. Uh, basically, uh, one of my metrics is if a deck is named after a card, Surgical Attraction is probably good in that matchup. Like, Sneak and Show. If you hit the Sneak or the Show, you'll be pretty stoked. Containment Priest is, is bananas. Always, never not. All right, I, I'm cool with what's going on here. Yeah, Mormigil, that's how it always feels. Like, when I play Show and Tell, my hand is just, like, nine Grizzle Brands. And then when my opponents play Show and Tell, it's just, like, turn one, Show and Tell, Omniscience, Immercool, Grizzle Brand. This hand does everything. I have a threat. I have two pieces of interaction. I have two lands. I have the plow just in case they have the artisan. All right, so... Right now, I have a choice to make, and I'm going to play it safe. I don't want to just die. Um, I could have played Delver and used Force of Will to protect myself, but if they just had, like, a turn two... Yeah, if they just had the turn two, uh, I would... With Force of Will backup, I would lose. But that... Taking the more conservative line there keeps me safe from from that line. They had the Ancient Tomb, so they could have jammed last turn, and they might have if I had tapped out. Though I think if they had forced, they would have jammed anyway. Intuition. I would be so excited to have a Surgical Extraction in my hand right now, let me tell you. Alright, I'm gonna let this resolve, and that'll tell me a lot about what their hand, like what it needs. So they could get three show and tells, three monsters, or three force of wills right now. All right. So their hand contains show and tell. We know that now. And having both plows sucks, though. I need a brainstorm pretty bad. 
show and tell. I'm going to fluster storm this because fluster storm is the hardest one to fight over when you don't when you're tapped out. And I can spell pierce a sneak attack. I cannot fluster storm a sneak attack. All right, this delver is going to flip revealing brainstorm, I promise. Guaranteed. I would also accept ponder. What do we got? Delver Sacred's bummer. <laughs> All right, none of the above. Though increasing the clock, I could do worse. Listen, Kratz, I, I, I do my best. <laughs> I play the game like I'm always going to have the perfect card all the time. All right, here comes the sneak attack, probably. Good thing I saved this spell pierce for it. So, all right, that also worked. All right, now it's time for the ponder. We, we're just waiting for the big show off with the two Delvers instead of one. And... Ponder! I told you it was coming. I wouldn't lie to you. My faithful chat. No, I love you guys. Alright, that's pretty insane. So, have you ever drawn everything? Alright, so now I have two points of interaction again. In the next turn, I'm drawing Containment Priest, which is... My favorite card, though there's not going to be a next turn because they're at six. This worked last time. Let's do it. Back them up. They can't even have Lightning Bolt because that would put them to three with the fetch. You can always have one Vapor Snag in the deck and call your depth matchup solved. My depths matchup's already pretty good. That's one of the huge pluses of this build of the deck. Like having Wastelands and Jace in the deck uh, really swings this matchup away from like the the blue white Niv Magus Delver decks, like the the more aggressive ones. All right, here's here's this deck that we're playing. Uh, I'm gonna run to the bathroom real quick, refill my drink. Oh, this is the wrong one. This is the one I just told you was bad. All right, here's the good one. All right. I will be right back and we'll continue crushing this league with this awesome deck. BRB. I would just like to point out that in that last match, my opponent took eight off of their Ancient Tomb while Delver was beating him down. Ooh, bad spot to be. Mormagill, I did not watch Star City coverage this weekend because I was busy watching uh, movies and stuff that I wanted to watch instead. Uh, I, I watched the, the Popper PTQ Top 8 from LA. That was pretty awesome that they covered that. But I, I did not watch any Star City coverage. Uh, what happened in the finals? Oh, Vapor Snag is what happened. 
Oh, that that that's rough. Did did anybody watch the VSL last week, the Vintage Super League? I was in the Vintage Super League last week. I played Lands last week, and in my match against Brian Kelly, I had turn one Merit Lage in both games, and he had his one outer repeal in both game. I still won both of those games eventually, but he didn't let me just 2020 him, and it was real sad. He had one repeal in his 75, and <laughs> had it turn one both games for my turn one Merit Lage both games. Uh, that, that's all right. Still got there. Slow and steady. Yeah, Vapor Snag is a is a magic card you can play in your deck for sure. <laughs> yeah, the the Vapor Snag. Yeah, right, right. The 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 important difference in the story is that I won my match anyway, and uh, David Long did not. Uh, so. Earlier today, I was just like mindlessly clicking around my computer and realized I had David Long's deck open in three different tabs on two different windows. And I think my subconscious is trying to tell me something that it wants to uh, play this deck. All right, I'm not gonna ponder yet because I don't know what I need. And I don't wanna like get basic land and not have a turn to Stoneforge. And I don't wanna get Tundra and get wasted out of the game. So they are, have polluted Delta in their deck. Sputteroni, thanks for the follow. Good to have you. All right. Time to fetch a Reno. All right, let's see what happens here. Resolves, that's fun. I hope they're a combo deck and not Grixis Delver. Like Grixis Delver, I've been told is a tough matchup, though I usually beat it. <clears throat> this end step fetch is suspicious. Could be a lightning bolt. Oh, just swamp. Am I getting fatal pushed? Okay. No big deal. <laughs> I mean, Emma's right. Like you can't play around a one of. Like that 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 is just a, a fact. It, it is Mathematically right to jam your 2020. Because it puts them in the position of A, having it, and B, spending their turn doing it instead of what they'd rather do. All right, they did not shuffle off that ponder. So I'm just going to go ahead and waste them here. I don't know what they're up to, but I don't want them to have complete control over their, their game. So Brainstorm's going to be good here. It's going to get rid of this Batter Skull. Oh, and a bunch of these lands. All right, I don't want Batter Skull in my hand at all. They're not going to play around the second Wasteland. And I'm going to hold up Spell Snare. I don't want to get him to Turok. And I certainly don't want to get Infernal Tutor this turn. I hope they're a Eureka deck. The Eureka, the... Uh, the Shadow, what, what is that card called? There's a Commander Ninja that has been getting played in Legacy lately in these uh, blue-black style decks. All right, that's what we left up Spell Snare for. Unfortunately, I've been testing Yuriko, and she's bad. Like, the type of decks she goes in are just not good. Yeah, the Tiger Shadow. Uh, I... All right, so here's the awkward tension of this deck. Sorry to interrupt my thought again, but we have Jace, and I could be making my fourth land drop right now, but there's one here, and I really want to shoot this one off, too. All right, ponder for a brainstorm. Uh, do, what do I want to do here? All right, so I want to put the brainstorm on top all right so i'm not going to shuffle i'm going to draw the brainstorm next turn uh in my testing with the eureka decks uh 
I was crushing every combo deck I played against, like every single one. But I absolutely could not defeat any kind of fair deck. All right, so the top of my deck is Brainstorm. I can try to force this, or I can Brainstorm into an answer. And I'm two land drops away from... from Jace anyway. All right, so my hand's now full of answers for this thing. All right, I'll put these two back. Then I can cast True Name Nemesis with Spell Pierce back up next turn. And they missed their land drop, so I can take a crunch. Not a big deal. Got lots of life to play with. I'm going to get a Tundra, because at this point in the game, if they waste me, it's going to hurt them a lot more than it hurts me. Well, there's a Force of Will. Juicy little two for one. And even if they Force again, if they go to like Hellbent to deal with this thing... Jace just mops up this Durmag next turn. But as it stands, we're still good. Like, Land Edict is their way out of this. All right, Strix is fine. I will bury you with my Jace before the Strix becomes relevant. Even have Force of Will to protect Jace, though I don't think I'm going to need it. All right, Spell Pierce is functionally Force of Will here. Though, Yuriko could connect right now. <laughs> if they have her, this is a good one to, to connect with. Someone got 49th with uh, a Yuriko deck. Yeah, Thief of Sanity has been getting tested in this format too, which... And it's a powerful card. It's just a three mana two two. So, oh, with Thief of Sanity. Okay. All right, they're attacking Jace. I'm pretty sure Yuriko only triggers off player damage. So no worries. All right, I don't want those Force of Wills anymore. I will take a Basic Planes just in case. Uh oh, what are we fighting over right now? This hot upkeep action. All right, so they are Grixis. Is this just Grixis control? Yeah, this might just be Grixis control. Colagon's command. If only I had a spell pierce. Cool. That worked out well. Yeah, they cannot control me. That's weird. The, the chat filter just tried to filter out more McGill's comment, and I cannot imagine why. All right, so I have another true name here. Days Force, Jute. All right, I'm not going to want Jute this turn. Though I am going to want it next turn. Jace will see to that. And I'm going to put Ponder on top of it. Now I'm going to put Brainstorm on top of it. Now I'm doing a lot of brainstorming. What I'm thinking about here is, if next turn I need to force and daze something, what blue card do I want to pitch? And I think I want to keep the Ponder and pitch the Brainstorm if it comes to that. I hope they forced this so bad. All right, they didn't. <laughs> that would have been the Nutter Butters to daze a Force of Will at this point in the game. Time to take this beast over. Next turn, I can equip Gta to one of these, kill the Strix, and then we're just Fonzie. So we got kind of lucky here with the Wastelands, because Grixis Control plays a ton of lands. Oh man, I hope I daze a Jace here. Please just ram it onto this deck. Ah, uh, bummer. 
I am not going to fight this fight. I'm way ahead on board. My next two draw steps are good. There we go. Get out of here. Now I have a land drop. Yeah, so trying to waste this deck out is usually a huge mistake, but it worked out this time. All right, so I want to draw Delver last. I want Spell Pierce next turn. And I want the GTA pressure on right now. So the reason I help, I'm ready for the Spell Pierce next turn is that I have Force of Will. Like the only card I'm really scared of is Jace. And I can force that. I think if they had a force, they would have fought over some other stuff by now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, this is exactly lethal in play. All right, so now I'm not scared of Jace because, yeah, whatever, resolves. Like, it can't bounce my things. They have no way to kill True Name Nemesis that costs one. Yeah, uh, they can have Jace. I don't care. I'll, I'll save this force. I'll save my brainstorm, but I'm pretty sure we win. Yeah. All right. Safe. All right, Grixis control. All right, so against Grixis, I don't like Delver. Four days. Like, we want to just become Stoneblade here. Like, their deck's full of removal. All right, so... Celestial Purge is great against Lilianas. Gideon's really hard for them to answer. Council's Judgment kills uh, all of their win conditions. True Name Nemesis is tough for them to deal with. Flusterstorm's pretty strong. I like Back to Basics too. It's mostly a bait spell. Like this will just like suck up a red blast at some point, and then you get to do something more important. Spell Snare is just gas. The cat's pajamas. You don't need all four plows against this deck. They have like two Garmag Anglers you care about. And I can also go down on a Force of Will. Getting two for one is not ideal. Though maybe all four forces is better than the third plow. Because we are the aggro deck. We're not going to out-control Grixis control going long. So when we jam a threat, we need it to stick. Like the 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 way this matchup plays out, like the versions, the the iterations of this matchup where you have a turn one or two threat versus the ones where you don't are just crushingly different. I've got rewarded with the Wasteland play, though. I, I'm not going to play this game like that unless they show significant weakness. Well, I just got a text from the Red Robin Royalty Club that I get a free Tavern Double Burger and Bottomless Fries valid tomorrow. That's sweet. I'm not streaming tomorrow. Maybe it's time for some Bottomless Fries. Hashtag not sponsored yet. All right, so this hand is great because it counters a turn to him to Turok. And getting himmed is like, the, getting himmed is the early game. Like you, you just don't want that to happen. So the only thing they would cast on turn one is Ponder or Thoughtseize. All right, and it's Ponder. They're on six. They topped the card, but it doesn't matter. They shuffled, and they did not shuffle their library. Cool. Handful of lands. This is fine. We got two ways to counter him to Turok. I'm into it. Though they can't cast him to Turok by fetching Island on turn one. I have no ways to counter a Baleful Strix, though, which is what's going to happen. You got it, dude. I have the Ponder plus Fetch Land combo. Ooh, those are good cards. Not gonna shuffle. I'll play this in case they cast him to Turok or Liliana or something, but if they don't cast anything, I'm just gonna draw this brainstorm and be super happy about it. 
after board, they're going to have some edicts or marsh casualties to deal with Nemesis. Like a lot more outs than they had game one. It's great having the, the wastelands, though, because you get to put them in this position where they don't really want to fetch non-basics because they don't want to get wasted out, but then it's hard to cast their spells later if they fetch basics. All right, so they have four cards in hand. All right, I'm going to let them have this because I want to draw the Brainstorm. If I was going to shuffle my deck anyway, I might spell Fierce this. But I do want that Brainstorm pretty desperately. That's a good card. Yeah, this value Snapcaster, the like 2-1 cantrip, is a, it's a sign that their hand is not ready to play a long game yet. I'm not ready to jam True Name yet either because I want it to resolve and I want to be able to protect it. So I, look at all these true names. All right, I'm not going to need the Swords to Plowshares because true name plus GTA will do everything I need it to. And I don't need a basic planes for a while. All right, so next turn I can shove true name with Counterspell back up. They don't have any way to punish me for getting a Tundra. Like the, their deck doesn't play Wasteland, I can't afford to. Sometimes they do play a Blood Moon or a Back to Basics, but I don't expect they would have brought it in against me. It'd be a pretty bad plan all around. That said, I am going to fetch Basic Planes here, because Flooded Strand can get Basic Planes, and a lot of my fetch lands can't. Go get him, Nemesis. Let the parade begin. Force of Will. All right. Can't fight over that one. You got me. Force Pitching Fluster Storm. That's cool. I have Spell Pierce for a Jace. I have Spell Snare for a Snapcaster, though there's nothing to snap back right now. I'm not going to fight over Strix. There's more important spells. This GTA will control the Strixes when we get there. Blood Moon, that's interesting. Why would they do that? Oh, that protects them from back to basics, because now all their non-basics are just lands. I mean, yeah, fine, deal. <laughs> I'm not going to counter that. I brought in back to basics for this matchup, so you can have your mountains. Hopefully I'm only going to need one planes to play this game on. Like Council Judgment and Gideon are my only... Oh, sweet. All right, so now this is in play. Red Blast can't hit it. And we're going to have an epic fight over this GTA next turn. I just hope I draw a land so I can equip and bash. Snapcaster beats are stopped. It's just Strix beats now. Strixly slower. Land? Ooh, True Name Nemesis is also a good card. I could... So if I play Jitae now, I only have Force of Will to fight over it with. Or, I won't be able to equip it. I can still fight over it, I just can't equip. And that hangs it out pretty loose to Colagon's command. But I have Force of Will. Or I could just play this a little slower and jam another true name, but then it's just hanging out there for Red Blast. Tough stuff. I'll start with a Brainstorm and see where this goes. Oh, I like Swords of Plowshares. I also like Jace. All right, I'm not going to want Jace for a little bit, though. So I can plow. Do I even want to plow? Do I need to plow? What does plow even do? 
I could jam Jitae, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna jam Jitae this turn. So now Fluster Storm, Storm is enormous. I have the Force of Will. And if this connects next turn, we're just in Pound Town. Getting Yuri Code would be rough though. <laughs> Trusty old Yuri Code. Yeah, I have every soft counter in my deck and my only hard counter. Cola Guns Command. I'm going to force it. I think I have to pitch True Name Nemesis. As much as I don't want to. But I, I want to make sure nothing untoward happens to me. Fuck my life. All right, so they have a mana up, which means that I can't, I can't fluster them back because they can pay for one of them. Then I can't pay for the one that they paid for. All right. You got me, opponent. And this is discard a card. All right, I'm going to discard this plow. Oh, yeah. Good catch, Mormigil. <laughs> Bang. We still win this fluster fight because they started the fight. It was my force of will. If it went the other way, yeah, the, the math on fluster storm is really weird. Like who initiates the fight matters. And then who has the fluster storm matters and how much mana is open matters. We couldn't fluster their fluster. We could totally fluster their K command though. So got there <laughs> eventually with the help of Mormigo. And I'm not going to jam Jace because I put it on top of my deck, <laughs> primarily. All right, so this is going to buy us a ton of time. <laughs> yeah, the Soldier Player. So I like to imagine that once that stack cleared, I would have noticed that I could fluster their thing. I don't think they have any split second effects or ways that would. I mean, they're just going to go to combat and attack. So I'll, I'll just kill this Snapcaster now while the getting's good. Yeah, they need a second Colligan's Command right now to just not lose the game. They can't. Oh, they can snap Colligan's. One snap. Call, they can't snap K Command through Spell Pierce. So I'm safe from that. Jace is in my hand now. Still not doing it. All right, we're just running away now. Yeah, so hopefully they're just... I hope their hand is just like Jace's and cards that they could have cast if they didn't have Blood Moon in play. This is crazy. I don't know why this is here. Like, what? All right, I'll take it. Yeah, I, I imagine their hand was just full of, like, Liliana's and Jace's and things they couldn't cast. It could have been counter spells too. Like, we were... I maneuvered to a point where my board was overwhelming, so their counter spells were bricks, because I wasn't planning on casting another spell that game. Yeah, it, it's pretty sweet that even in control matchups, GTA connecting is the, the end of the game. Like, they're, they're anemic beats. Like, that's why I'm okay going down to two plows. Like, yeah, they have snaps and strixes that are win conditions, but GTA will control them. And Batter Skull is pretty good at controlling them, too. Though, Colligan's Command is pretty brutal against Batter Skull. You just got to be able to fight over the K Command when it happens. Well, that felt good. Haven't lost a game yet tonight. 2-0, 2-0, 2-0. Let, let's do that. Let's just four more game wins tonight over the next two matches. No losses. The perfect, smooth league to start off the... this Come back from the stream hiatus. 
And that would be a nice chunk towards uh, qualifying for the legacy thing. Pretty sure you get five legacy points. Yeah, five legacy points for a, a one league. We locked our money back guarantee. Now, now it's all gravy. And I want some gravy. Give me that gravy. All right, let's look at more decks while opponents are being located in stage one. What does that even mean? I've never even seen stage two. Ooh, don't want that. Amagro, we're playing uh, Azorius Delver, Harlan's List from the, the top four. Yeah, uh, this is this is the plan. Uh, we're doing a league with this. And then I might switch over to Grixis, unless we 5-0, then I might just ride the high and do another blue-white league. So, Mono Red Prison. Uh, I played the, the Legacy Challenge last weekend with Miracles, and I went 4-3. and three. I played against... I timed out against Death and Taxes in a match that I was likely to win, but we went into Game 3 where... They had a minute 30 on their clock, and I had, like, 59 seconds. So I couldn't actually win, but it felt super favored, my position. Well, Amigro, if you're bad at turn one Delvers, this is the deck for you, because it's not actually a Delver deck. It's a secret Delver deck. It, it's actually Stoneblade. It just plays Delvers in it. So I think that uh, the blue-white decks are all pretty heavily favored against the mono red prison deck but i did lose twice to it uh in as usual frustrating fashion where like uh where like you keep a hand that can answer like it can ignore blood moon answer chalice then like cantrip into victory after that and then they have like the turn one trinosphere like the one thing you couldn't be uh, or like you're ready for any of their prison pieces but they just have like turn one rabble master turn two rabble master turn three rabble master and then you're dead. So I, I've been thinking about trying this deck just for funsies, but not on Magic Online because it's very expensive and doesn't overlap with anything. But I do own all the cards for it in real life. I would love to play first. I love die rolls. All right, this hand's pretty good. The daze is awkward when you want Stoneforge, but hopefully that'll protect my Stoneforge on turn two. Like, this is one of those kind of, like, all-in Stoneforge Mystic hands. I really hope they're just playing combo. That, that would be the way to do this. Lead on Scalding Tarn so I don't get wasted. Uh-oh. Jeez, this shit again. Um, I could Daze Mom... No, I, I can daze something better next turn. Like, I can daze the Thalia they play next turn. All right, I'm just going to run this Tundra out here because they're going to get me with Wasteland no matter what. The deck only has two Tundras, though, so this is all of them. All right, it's time to go to GTA Town. As this this whole matchup, as we we played through this with Maverick already, and this this matchup works the same way. Uh, that connecting with Jitte is everything. Oh, speak of the devil, man! I would love to put their Jitte in the graveyard already. Bang! So that makes this a lot easier. That I don't have to worry about theirs. Brainstorm's a good draw. Holding up Spell Snare is pretty great. Still have Force of Will. The Mom does keep Jitte at bay, but Jitte, having Jitte on a creature means that they can never use their Mom for anything else. Cast Thalia. Let me waste you. I hope they cast something I can snare. I don't really want to have to force anything. Aether Vile. I'm not going to fight over that. All right. Mono Vials. All right. 
Jute's in. All right, a flying threat. Now we're playing. And I can make sure it flips too. So yeah, I'm casting Delver. Shit, I should have wasted first. Let's see what they do here. All right, I am gonna waste. No, I'm gonna save my wasteland for Rashad and Port. That's that's a better way to play this matchup. Like it is usually a mistake to try to waste Death and Taxes off mana, especially like two vials. I'm gonna save this for when they draw Rashad and Port, and just make sure I can play my spells. Yeah, more McGill, I saw your, uh, I read your updates as you were playing this past weekend. Mirror and Crusader, that thing is going to die immediately. Uh, yeah, that's fine. So I'm, I am going to use Brainstorm here to aggressively flip my Delver, which is not a play I'm usually into, but it's like the whole game right now. So they can't vial in swords to plowshares, so we should be pretty well set up here. Like I don't even know what they could vial in on one that I care about. Having a flying thread is just so big. Boop boop. Boop. gonna put this mom to bed yeah okay deal and I'm gonna cast this stone forge I have force of will to protect me if they do something crazy but otherwise I just want to push this advantage I want to get my deck shuffled I don't want that other wasteland that is not gonna help me in this game Can't wait to bring in Engineered Explosives and Containment Priest. Priest is kind of awkward in this matchup because they can uh, Flicker Wisp creatures to exile permanently, but it's also sweet. Like if, if, you, if you respond to Flicker Wisp, their thing is gone. If you have Priest already, your thing is gone. But they can't hit Priest with it, so that's nice. They could have Sarah Avenger here if they really want a. Uh... All right. I'm just going to try to clear their board. I can make this creature a 1 1. And it gets to trade with one of my Stone Forges because it has the Dubla Strike. They might get me here. Like, if they do have Sarah Avenger, they can trade with Delver. Another Mirror Crusader. I don't care. At all. But now I can cast Force of Will. I think Force of Will's stock is uh, pretty much over in this game, though. Though, if they have Sarah Avenger, we'll just trade. And then GTA will have two counters on it. A Remorseful Cleric. Okay. Uh, that gets to block. So now they have a choice. They can sack in a response so I don't get counters, or they can trade off with the Delver. And Jute does get counters, but Delver's gone. So it's a interesting decision point there. All right. They went with the trade and give me counters.
it. So now Vial is on three. Flicker Wisp is live. I'm going to hold this Force of Will for Palace Jailer as long as I can. Mom? Handled. I'm just going to take four if they attack. All right. They wisely did not. So they could Flicker Wisp my Germ here if they don't want to take damage. All right. That's about enough lands, I think. All right, so this has protection from black, which is the color that germs are, unfortunately. So I can vote Miran Crusader off the island and then attack with my two creatures. I'm going to go for that. In this, like, rather than minus twoing. Mirror and Crusader with Gta and then getting blown out by Flicker Wisp. This this line dodges Flicker Wisp pretty well. Like I still get to kill Mom with my Gta when I do this. They have one card in hand. It's been in their hand for a long time though. Uh, that's a card that's just been sitting there, so it's very likely to be Flicker Wisp. Yeah, and, and that's like the only reasonable thing they could have thought about. If it is Wisp, I hope it's just Wisp and not Wisp or Recruiter into Wisp. All right, go team. All right, here it is. Let's figure out what, how much damage it was. Uh, it was, in fact, Recruiter. Let's see what they recruit for. Do they have a third Mirror and Crusader? It's almost certainly Wisp, though. Unless they recruit for another recruiter to set up a big next turn. Yeah, if they recruit for another recruiter, just take a crunch of damage, and then the, the second recruiter can get Palace Jailer, that might be a way through this. No, no, they just got the Wisp. Okay, we we're ready for that. All right, what's the plan, Wispy Guy? Yeah, by casting Council Judgment first, now they have two things that they have to answer instead of just one. All right, they're going for the germ. I'm going to kill this thing so it can't trade with my Stoneforge. Germ's gone. You got it. Take counters online. Kill this. And I'm going to hold off because I don't care about this. Oh, my germ comes back. Hooray. It doesn't actually come back. All right, so they have a lot of bricks in their deck. And depending on how many recruit recruiter is their best draw if they have another one. I would not be excited about a palace jailer either. Though they would have to cast it because they didn't take a vial up. And I am ready if they cast it. So they have to have some sort of three drop that they act actively want to flash in. But I get to do this now. Battle cruiser operational. So if they bricked on this draw, we're about to crunch for a million. Even if they draw Flicker Wisp, like it would, it could stop GTA from getting two counters, and they still take five, and they lose their Wisp. It could reset my Batter Skull Germ. I guess Bouncing Stone Forge would have been the thing that makes the most sense, because I'm out of equipment to search for. It's not like I get a rebuy action. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right, we have them dead for Exaxes if I pump with everything, but that line dies to Flicker Wisp. Yeah, 
I'm just going to play conservatively here. Like no pumps, just just take your beats. Five GTA counters is basically plague wind. Maybe I should have done one pump to put them dead too. I mean, they're dead to one pump this turn. It's the same. So land is good. Batter skull. Oh my god. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Got him. The old turn. What turn was that? Turn nine days. Nice. All right, so true name nemesis is excellent. I daze them, bro. I will daze them every single time. Uh, explosives is great. Force of Will is not great. Spell snare is great. Spell pierce is medium to bad. I'm going to put my pierces in my maybe pile. I don't like back to basics, even though they have a ton of like sweet techie lands. Like back to basics could just like, it could shut them out of the game. It could turn off the Rashadden ports, or they could completely ignore it. And one of those outcomes is unacceptable to me. So I'm just going to bring in big beefy threats and permanent removal. All right, so Spell Pierce just got the chop because of all these cards that came in. Uh, Daze is pretty bad. Love me a Spell Snare. And the worst card left in the deck, I do like having two forces for things like uh, Palace Jailer or Cataclysm. So I, I never like going, like some people say board out all your counters magic against death and taxes, and I just don't agree with that. Having two forces as just like a uh, emergency button, you can dig for it with your cantrips if you need it. And Delver is now the worst card left in the deck. So three Delvers seems like a good number. Like we saw last game that we didn't need to just delve them out of the game. It wasn't like turn one Delver and then keep them off balance until they died. It was just like in the mid game, like turn four or whatever. It's just like, oh good, an evasive threat. I needed one of those. Perfect. If I didn't have Wastelands in my deck, I might bring in these back to basics, but Wasteland is pretty good at keeping Rashad and Ports in check. Come on, Spell Snare. I love Evan Spell Snare in the opener when I'm on the draw. So good. My opponent's name is Salty Salt. I hope that's not true. Though, I do plan on beating them, so we're going to find out. All right, Swords of Plowshare is good. Brainstorm, always good. We got a basic island and a basic planes with this hand. I don't think it's actual Salty Tim. The Dead Sea himself. He hasn't played Magic in a long time. Yeah, it could just be an accurate description of salt. Just, ooh, delicious salty salt. If I put salt on my food and it wasn't salty, I'd be pretty upset. So maybe their name is all positive and has nothing to do with, with raging or tilting. Man, have you ever played Legacy with Brainstorm in your deck? This is the best feeling to have Brainstorm in your hand. Like, it could be anything. Love that salt emote. Big fan every time. Come on, Spell Snare. Oh, bummer. So I'm going to lead on the Flooded Strand. Since I don't have a counter spell, but I might want to plow something. I'm not going to be able to plow a Thalia. But I will totally plow a uh, Stoneforge Mystic if that's what they have. All right, that's what they had. Sword of War and Peace. I'm glad I have this disenchant. All right, so that costs three and then two. I might hold on on this. Because I can disenchant the sword. Okay, that makes this really easy. I'm going to brainstorm then plow. 
Now that I have a backup plow, what am I saving it for? Oh my god, this is so good. Alright. I think Jace can take a break. I don't want this wasteland. And Jace can uh I'll find Jace later when I need him. Like the early stage of this game are just don't die mode. Yeah, the, the Brainstorm Dilemma. I just want all these cards. Do I have to put some back? The answer is yes, or else that's incest for recall. All right, I decided to plow here instead of hold up Spell Snare because I don't want to get juked, like, if they just have Batter Skull instead. Like, if they, if I'm like, whatever, I have Sword of War and Peace covered, and then they're just like, surprise, Batter Skull. All right, cool. That's fine. Sword of War and Peace is in play. That card's significantly less scary when you have Disenchant in your hand. And I'm going to leave up the blue. Oh, I should have pondered first. What am I doing? I should have pondered because that's a, a free shuffle. But now that we're here, I am going to leave up Spell Snare. They don't have a Vile. They don't have a Cavern. God, I hope they don't have the Palace Jowler. <laughs> that would be my nightmare. Play a uh, two drop. Play a uh, two drop. All right, that's why I tapped Tundra and not Island to cast Stoneforge. Like, I could have been representing Plow and Snare. All right. Flicker your land, probably. Yeah. wasted lands back they didn't plow me so that's good news all right now it's time to ponder we play a lot of lands let's draw some of them land got there never didn't have it So I'm definitely casting Swords to Plowshares this turn, so this attack is free. Like, if they want to trade Flickerwisp for Stoneforge, I am in. Sign me right up for that. And I'm going to Plow in response to the Equip, because this is going to line up really well. Uh, it costs them two mana to Equip, and then they only have two mana up, and they can jam a two drop straight into my Snare. Do it. All right, they're scared, or they just don't have anything. If I draw a land, I'm ranching. Nice. I will absolutely use Force of Will to protect this card right now. As long as they don't have two plows, we're good. Though, if they had a plow, they should have cast it already, unless they just drew it. They have Disenchant. All right. I'm here for it. That would have been a great two-drop to counter at, on a one-for-one -one basis. But like like we've established multiple times already tonight, getting that first GT hit is huge. Huge. Like, now they need to play something with three toughness or bigger to ever get a War and Peace on it. Oh, boo. <laughs> All right. All right, fine. Let's just draw Jace. Oh no, Recruiter of the Guard. All right, so they had two disenchants. What are you going to do? All right, what are they recruiting for? Palace Jailer is the scariest one. I hope it's a two drop. Though they really should get Palace Jailer if they have it. That card is, for most intents and purposes, just lights out. Though, if it doesn't work, they're dead. Oh, yes, they got a two drop. I'm so excited. Oh, so close to playable. All right, get in there, Stoneforge Mystic. I should have left that back, actually. Like, I, they would have equipped the Sword of War and Peace and attacked. I could have disenchanted, blocked, 
counter Thalia, then they just have nothing. Lame. Missed my window for a free consumption of Recruiter of the Guard there. I can only get super punished, though, if they draw Flicker Wisp. You get out of here. Oh, this would have been so nice. Now I am the Salty Salt. Get out of here. Put it in the graveyard. Block. Your thing's dead. Let's draw a white source and do it. Just do it. All right. We're not. It's not too late. White source. Oh. I'm gonna put back Gideon and Ponder, then play Delver. I'm gonna get this Rashad and port out of here. I'm not fucking with that. I'm gonna hold back stone ports this time. Like if they have a Jite, I wanna be able to block and eat both counters right now. Cause it they would trade or this would eat this with one damage on it, and then the two counters would go boom boom to just clear my board. That's so and if I attacked with Stoneforge, trading one damage when they're at 21 for a possible, like, uninterrupted GTA is not a good deal. Not good plays. All right, they get to Wisp, their guard. So if I had made my play correctly last turn, this line wouldn't be available. But since I played bad, here it is. Now, that was so bad, just attacking for one when they were at 22 when I could have they would have 100% fallen for my line salty salt though they weren't interested in palace jailer last time I hope they still aren't all right flicker wisp again time to ponder into a swords to plowshares Yeah, they're just... Oh, sure. Yeah. Deal. I wanted a shuffle anyway. Yeah, uh, like, the fact they haven't gotten jail Jailer yet is really weird. Oh, Gideon is still there. <laughs> Deez. Um. Okay. Ah, shit. God, I wish I could... I wish there was a way to unclick on Magic Online once you click. I really wanted to draw Gideon. All right, so now since I made the bad play of not killing the Recruiter, I'm priced into forcing this Flicker Wisp. Like, I can't just let their them chain and Flicker Wisps for the rest of the game with this Recruiter. It would be so weird if they don't have a Jailer, though. That's the best card in this whole deck. Caracas. Don't care about that. Oh, I care a lot about that. Damn. Well, I'm glad I have this Force, at least, though. I can't break up their chain now. Yuck. I played this deck in a Legacy tournament last Friday, and I had a Supreme Verdict in the sideboard, and I kind of wish I had it right now. God, th this whole line made possible by that one punt. Like, this matchup, like, playing perfectly with and against Death and Texas is really hard. But uh, the whole position we're in right now is completely my fault. I need to shuffle at this point. Sword supply shares. All right, sweet. I don't have a third color in my deck to just nuke the board here. But I can at least break up this wisp line. But I think I'm just dead to the wisps. 
that are already in play. Like I take six, I go to 10, then I go to one and I'm drawing something that's not helpful. Yeah, I need a batter skull in my top three for any of this to make sense. All right, <laughs> better late than never though. It might as well be never at this point. Stoneforge, so I can Stoneforge, oh, I can get Batter Skull. All right, we're still in it. I can Stoneforge for Batter Skull. I go to one. And then I attack back. I go to five. That, that still isn't helpful. So I, I got draws. My GTA is already in the graveyard, unfortunately. All creatures go. So what does this Snapcaster do? Unfortunately, I can't snap a uh, nine, five. I can't even plow my own germ to get above lethal. Can't snap Jute, unfortunately. Yeah, if I had two more life, Yep. Yeah, th this game would have been easily in my control if I did the thing that makes sense earlier and got the two for one off the disenchant. Sucks, but at least now we're paying attention. They brought in Path to Exile. That's awesome against our deck with six basics. And it's also very important on Magic Online in this matchup to make your opponent kill you. Like, make them take all the game actions to defeat you. Because... The, the clock matters a lot. It, you're going to get into these grindy games, and being down a minute going into game three could just be the whole match. As stupid as that is, but that's the world we live in. Oh, my opponent disconnected. We were just saying, that's the win con. In 10 minutes is plenty of time to win a game, but uh, it also might not be. So let's see what happens here. Yeah, the, yeah, this whole game, like, there would be one Flicker Wisp instead of three in play. And I'm I'm going to lose because I don't, I can't gain two more life than what I, like, if I had two more life, I would easily stabilize this board. But instead, here we are. Small mistakes. You don't have to freak out, just learn from them. Though, I would not be upset if my opponent times out in this match. <laughs> I, I'm not going to lie. The I've played a lot of Miracles in, in real life and on Magic Online. And in both, like, when you're starting game three with, like, four minutes left on the clock, both players play so weird. So, like, in... in uh, in paper magic, you just like spew all of your threats onto the board as fast as you can. And like, if they get answered, it's whatever. Uh, then you just go to a draw. In magic online, the person who's lower on clock, the onus is on them to not die, or the onus is on them to win before their clock runs out. So they have to take game actions. And it's possible that you can just like F6 click your way <laughs> to victory without ever taking a game action. Which is super dumb, but is like totally a thing. All right, I'm gonna let them run out as much clock as I can here. I'm gonna use a little bit of my clock to eat up a little bit of theirs. This plow. Got a few extra seconds there, and dead for Xaxes. Splat. Oh well. Punted that one very early, but it, 
It's just important to figure out where you messed up so you don't do it again. And I recognized that line as soon as I did it too. That's the, the worst part. All right, so I didn't see any reason to change my sideboard plan. Expel Pierce is kind of defensible in this matchup. Like they're gonna have council judgments and stuff in their deck. Two snares, two forces, is that enough? And on the play, I could hit an Aether Vial with this. Uh, it's close. I would cut another Delver for it. Like that's that's the worst card left in the deck. Yeah, I'll, I'll play one spell Pierce. Like if they jam a Gideon or something, like I want to be able to hit that later. I don't want Cataclysm to ever resolve. Snapkeep. We got the Ponder, we got a Brainstorm, we got lands, we got removal, and we got a threat. This is this is the whole game plan right here, right in the hand. And every precious second they think about their mulligan. We get closer to victory. Oh, they're on five. Four, 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 four. Uh, they put their card on top. That's lucky. I'm going to try to play this game on all basics. I mean, I, I always do that anyway, but I really don't want to get, like, wasted out. Oh, that's a good draw. All right, so I'm going to have Spell Snare going into their turn two, and I drew another basic land I can fetch. So, all right, there's Aether Vial. What did you cackle at, Anzi? Also, hello, Anzi. All right, so time to spell snare something, then untap and council judgment this, and then we win. My top card was Jace. I don't want that yet. I'll get that basic plane set up. All right. Unfortunately, we are required to play out a Tundra here. If they have Mom, it's coming into play. If they don't, we're now playing fair and square. They didn't have Thalia. They didn't have Stoneforge on turn two. Wow, what are they doing over there? So I can, I'm just gonna jam Gideon. Like they could counsel his judgment it. I could wait a turn to play around it, but like they mulled the five. They haven't taken any game actions. Let's just do this. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, it, it's super luck. Luck or noob keeps their, their scry on top. All right, the Knight Ally is the first permanent in play. That, that's a pretty good start to the game. And my hand is still just answers. God, what are they doing? I imagine that they must have swords to plowshares. So this Gideon is not going to attack. Like, I'm not just going to ram Gideon into plow. Let's just chugga chugga here. And I don't even need to do anything. I'm not even going to cast this Brainstorm because I don't know what I'm looking for. Like, my hand answers everything, including the Monarch. Like, if they jam Palace Jailer, they exile one of the Knights, I plow the Jailer, and then I attack with the other Knight, and then I become the Monarch. Like, I just don't care. Walking Ballista. This card costs four on the stack. Okay, you got it, dude. It would be a shame if it got disenchanted. Which enchanted? This one. All right, so they can whittle down Gideon or they can kill a knight. I'm pretty sure they need to kill a knight here. I disenchanted this instead of plowed it because plow hits all the creatures in their deck and disenchant only hits this one. Or revoker if they, they have revoker. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Do the thing that is more narrow, if you have a choice. All right, Gideon gets the blast this turn. Because I have Spell Pierce. Got 
I, I do my best to put on a good pun show. Bang. It's like we knew. All right, still don't know what I'm looking for. Holding the brainstorm. We still beat a palace jailer. Rashad and Port, oh no. If they want to keep drawing lands, I wouldn't get mad. All right, Gideon is back on make knight token mode. Now I have two brainstorms, I can get a little willy-nilly with the first one. Nice. All right. I don't need two plows or two snares in my hand. And Snapcaster Mage is basically Demonic Tutor at this point. Like every card that I could want is already in my hand or graveyard. God, they have so many lands. They're going for the high score. I do not have a lot of lands, though, which is kind of lame. Yeah, they could Marshall Kumi. That would, <laughs> that would work. It would absolutely get me. I would have to brainstorm into Force of Will to stop that. My top card is Spell Snare. And I don't know anything under that. So I have two live looks if I do need to brainstorm right now. I can't imagine what they could even do that I care about. Certainly not that. That kills a knight, but my opponent is dead. I don't even think I'm going to plow this yet. Let's see if they block. Might have to brainstorm in response to the port on Tundra. <clears throat> in that, that's like a line that's available to me, but they haven't given me a reason to take any game actions yet other than pooping out tokens with Gideon. Like they're dead to these knights. If they kill a knight, they're dead to Snapcaster. If they do nothing, they just die to the board. Uh, they have so many lands. Stoneforge Mystic. I'm ready for that one. <laughs> All right, I will brainstorm this turn. All right, didn't need to. All right, so they have one card in hand. It can't answer two things. All right, so this should do it. Even if they plow Gideon here, they're taking four. All right. Anurag, my reason for not brainstorming in my upkeep at any point was uh, I every turn that I wait to brainstorm is one card deeper when I need to brainstorm. So like, if I need Force of Will to win and it's just not in my top three, then like, my hand already has everything I want. Like I don't want to get rid of anything. I don't have a shuffle effect to get rid of stuff necessarily. Like, it would have to come off the top three. So, like, if I am if I need a specific card in a specific circumstance, I'd w rather wait for that circumstance to look for it. That was my thought process in just letting my land get ported. <clears throat> like, the Gideon was just, like, taking, away, taking over that game the whole time. I don't feel bad about beating up an opponent who mauled to five. <laughs> it's part of the game. All right. Let's have a layup match. Let's just play against like Red Prison and Crush. What's up, Steam Flogger Boss? Yeah, we're almost there. One more. 
This deck is nice. All right, while we're waiting for an opponent, let's look at... All right, we were talking about this deck before the last match started. <clears throat> Four Trinisphere is just brutal. This card is so good. Ugh. Yeah, like most of the cards in this deck... Yeah, that, that's what I mean, Honorog. Like, I'm... Uh, my hand answers any creature, any two drop, and I have Snapcaster to pressure. Like, I'm, I am just completely like I can snap, disenchant if they have batter skull. Like, the only thing I could possibly care about is like, like I can't even think of what it is. Like, it would have to be something crazy, like the Marshall coup for seven that the chat suggested. Like, a card that just doesn't exist in the deck. Like, I don't care about Palace Jailer even. Like, they can take a knight, and then I'll kill the knight, and I'll become the monarch, and then they lose. So, I, I, I don't... My hand is already full of great cards. I don't need a specific thing. I don't need more things. I don't need different things. Like, I'm just going to hold my brainstorm until a situation presents itself where I need that a specific thing. So, my... My second loss in the challenge this weekend was to Red Prison. Both of my real losses were to Red Prison. And in game three against the second one, my opponent had a Rabble Master running amok. And I flashed in Vendillion Click in their combat step. Like what, what I needed to do was not die this turn and then flip Terminus. I Vendillion Clicked in their combat step looked at their hand, it had Fiery Confluence, Blood Moon, and a land. And I took the Fiery Confluence because my life total was super low. And then <clears throat> uh, I blocked the Rabble Master. I went to like four or whatever. And then they jammed Boil post-combat. That was what they drew off Vendillion Click. And then it left me with one basic planes in play. And that planes... Uh, I actually did Miracle the Terminus, just blind actual Miracle Terminus. Uh, I did Miracle the Terminus, so I was at four. Oh, I meant to cast Delver there, but I'm glad I didn't. But I had no lands, so... <laughs> if if they didn't draw Boil there, I would have Miracle Terminus, Slam Jace, and easily won the game. But they drew the one Boil, which is not even a card that deck usually plays. All right, so we kind of drew a land off that ponder. I really did mean to cast Elver there, but I was busy talking about what I did last weekend instead of focusing on what I'm doing in front of me. Oh, God. Dredge. So I have two Surgicals and a Containment Priest in my whole deck to, to do this. All right. Blind Therapy and Miss. Blind Therapy and Miss. Blind Therapy and Miss. Shit. Oh, there... Their username is no mana needed. I should have put them on dredge immediately. All right, this matchup's probably bad. Like, in the history of my stream, I don't think I have a worse record against any deck than dredge. Okay, that was a good draw. So, I can... I think if they had Lion's Eye Diamond, they would have done it. All right, I'm going to play Delver and leave up Plow and Spell Pierce. Like, I'm not going to waste. Like I need to clock them. And like, the rule when you play against Dredge with the blue deck is counter literally anything. Like Anything they put on the stack, if you can counter it, do it. And these Plows will help with uh, Narcomoebas and Icarids later. So I need to get to a point where I can exile their bridges. So Batter Skull bouncing itself kills your germ, which exiles bridges. Other than that, all my ex removal exiles. So I can't, like, bolt my own Delver. That's not a line this deck has. I don't have a creature land I can wasteland. There's nothing like that. Amidis. 
a medic son a medic's son got it a medic son thanks for the follow all right so they hit a narc amoeba but not a cabal therapy so that's okay right now uh-oh please let me spell pierce a breakthrough that's what i want to do right now they hit one new dredger and it's thug And they had a second land. I'm glad I didn't waste land. All right. I told you the rules. This could be bait. Like, they could totally just, like, bait me with this and then cast Breakthrough. But I'm not going to risk that. Also, they only have one dredger, that's worth noting, and it's dredge four. So there's a world where even if they break through, their top four cards just aren't dredgers. Yeah, here's here's the breakthrough. It could be careful study also, but all right, fine. All right, at least they didn't have two of them. All right, another Narc Amoeba. Oh, they have a Cabal Therapy, still only one bridge. Two Narc Amoebas coming, though. And bridge sucks. I'm, I'm glad there's only one, though. That's a start. I'm going to get therapied here. I hope they don't name Swords of Plowshares. They probably bl blind name Brainstorm. Though, Plow is also a really good weapon against them. So, unfortunately, the two best blind names in the deck are both in my hand. Oh, are they just naming nothing? That's pretty cool. Maybe they think they can get a free name when I reveal to my Delver. What do we got? I'm not going to brainstorm to flip the Delver. That's just not a priority. Stoneforge Mystic is my best find, I think. Like, working to a... I don't know. It's all pretty bad. <laughs> this game one is so bad. That's why you play your edge. Though, this deck is better than most blue decks at beating Dredge. Because, uh, oh, I have Gta. Gta can kill my own creatures. All right, time to brainstorm. Let's find some action. All right, a new Spell Pierce is good. Uh, Snapcaster. They don't have any Icarids. I can't surprise block. All right, I might want Snapcaster next turn, but I definitely don't want it now. I think holding up Plow and Spell Pierce is the best thing to do. I don't think this Wasteland is going to help me much. Though it makes Spell Pierce hard counter, even though it already is. It takes them off. It takes them off Flashback Faithless Looting. So then I can only hold up one thing. All right, I'll put back the uh, Wasteland. It's tough. Wasteland and Snapcaster back. All right, yeah, there's no Icarids, no Blood Gas. I get to attack for free. Free. If they block, their bridges die. Unfortunately, I couldn't stack it, so... No, uh, I want all the cards in my hand in my hand. That That's the problem. Like, I'm not in a position where I get to flip my Delver right now. I'm in a position where I need all my spells to just survive. And I kind of want this Delver to trade, like get rid of a bridge. That's totally fine. I, I don't imagine they would block there ever. All right, now what? All right, these are not great dredges, so I'll take that. They are taking a bunch of damage from their lands though. That's pretty cool. 
Still only one therapy. Oh no. They have breakthrough this whole time. They did, those fuckers. And I can't spell pierce that. That would have been a, an argument to Wasteland. All right, so they're going to dump their deck into the graveyard right now. Nothing I can do about it. Narc Amoeba. Some Icarids. More bridges, more therapies. All right, yeah, we are mega, mega super dead. Maybe I... No, I... I don't know. I could have brainstormed for Corsa Will, but I know my top two cards. All right, yeah, I can't come back from this. We're dead. Yeah, I could have wasted there to make sure I didn't get breakthrough. Um, it's close. <clears throat> All right, Surgical, Engineered Explosives, get in. Containment Priest, get in. Celestial Purge is probably pretty good. It exiles Icarids. Uh, Council's Judgment is probably pretty bad. Uh, Daze is pretty close to hard counter. Spell Pierce. I'm not going to be snaring many spells. Jite is important. Delver is important. Snapcaster, Stoneforge are all important. Batter Skull, also important. And do you ever just want every card? Maybe Jace is not good here. I can shave the Dazes, too. Yeah, with the, the Surgicals, Priests, everything, I don't really want to be dazing. I want to be making my land drops. If you can extract their bridges and then get a Jite onto a True Name Nemesis, you can actually just beat their fair plan. So I think this is pretty good. And force is questionable. It's only good on the first couple turns, but it's so important and like you don't want it ever again. All right, I'll play it. No, I'm not happy about it. Oh, Flusterstorm. That's like better than force basically all the time. Forgot that was over there. Fluster. Flusterstorm is pretty close to hard counter, though they have a lot of mana. Like they, they played around the spell pierce last game. Yeah, I'm not gonna cut. I could go to Wasteland. No, I need my land drops. Oh, this is so tough. I hate dredge. <laughs> stupid, stupid dredge. Maybe I could cut a Delver. I think that is the worst card that's left. I mean, Jace is pretty close to the worst card. All right, so no hate cards. Though I do have a turn two brainstorm. Or I'll ponder on turn one, look for some hate cards. And then I can cast Delver and, and brainstorm on the following turn if I need to. I don't know if this hand's capable on the draw. I think we can do better. On the draw, I definitely would get rid of this, but being able to ponder before they play a spell and then brainstorm before they do anything else, I think is defensible. Though I wouldn't fault anyone for mulliganing here. All right. Didn't get there. Shuffle it up. Surgical extraction. All right, so if we get a turn, we're going to do some stuff. Yeah, there, there is a threat in hand. Though bricking on that ponder hurts a lot. God, stupid, stupid dredge. I hate it so much. Yeah, finding Stoneforge Mystic is important, or or just straight up Jite, skip the Mystic, skip the middle guy, the middle core. 
I hate that we had to shuffle the ponder too, because my opponent will see that. Oh, they're slow dredging. Okay, time to find surgical. All right, they might have street wraith, so that's not even good. All right, brainstorm, save me. Okay, we got a plan. We're not going to need... All right, Snapcaster is away, away from valuable. And I don't need this land. All right, so we got to use the Spell Pierce and Flusterstorm to survive the, the next couple turns. And then if we get stone for we stone forge for GTA next turn. Gifts ungiven, 99. Thanks for the follow. That's a great choice. Love that card. Excellent choice of name. So right now we're in the uh the dance of like, do they street wraith and get greedy and I blow them out with surgical? Or do they just slow dredge? Alright, that was a good slow dredge for me. They just Completely bricked. And they have three Stinkweed Imps in the graveyard now. So that's... That's a lot. Not that that matters a whole lot. Alright, Shuffling. Didn't want those cards. Come on, Containment Priest for the win. All right, so I'm going to jam Stoneforge this turn, get the GTA, and I, I get to Spell Pierce or Flusterstorm to weather another round. And next turn, I can cast GTA, put it on Stoneforge and attack, and then minus, minus the two counters to kill the Stoneforge itself. If I need to nuke bridges, that's a line that I have. And then I have Delver as a follow-up threat. Force of Will would be interesting here if they have it. Like, if they go into full mana list, uh, if they force this, then they're down to five cards in hand and their slow dredge is off. They, they're certainly thinking really hard for a dredge deck. Though that, like, if they force this and I spell Pierce and then they go, like, land breakthrough, I'm going to feel real sad. But if they are actual mana lists right now, like if they just board into mana lists against blue decks, I, mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what their plan is, if this is just how their, their hand worked out. Oh, I'm super suspicious of this pause. Hopefully they just like went to the bathroom and <laughs> they don't actually have anything. That's my preferred version of events. Yeah, once you're able to kill your own creatures at instant speed, their whole plan gets a lot less scary. Because <laughs> they can't make zombies, their Cabal Therapies are just zero for ones. Yes. I guess Cabal Therapy gets to name GTA pretty safely this turn, though. So there's a one-turn window where they could get me, but I would snap off a Flusterstorm or Spell Pierce on a Cabal Therapy if that comes. But for that to happen, they would have to hit a Creature to Sacrifice and a Therapy in their dredging. And now that they have two different dredgers in the graveyard, if they have Street Wraith, it's safe to do. Like last turn, they would have been blown out by Surgical, but this turn, it, it's totally safe. All right, just got to dodge two therapies here, and we're good. And the sweat begins. My opponent is the king of sweats with these long pauses in between plays. All right, looks like they just don't have it. No Narcomoeba, no Narcomoeba, no therapy, no Narcomoeba. 
Oh, they just drew. Okay. That was interesting. Oh, they're, they're now just drawing. I guess they want to play a game with lands. They determined they, they need to cast spells to win this game now. Oh, they're holding therapy. That was the problem. I probably should have fetched Basic Island with that, since I'm holding this Arid Mesa that can only get planes now. All right, so if they have another Street Wraith and it hits an Archimeba, they can flash this back. But if they don't, we get to just go. All right, let's do it. Oh, Wasteland. It's tempting, but... Oh no, is Moto frozen? Oh, there's my land, okay. So, now I have some choices. I could pass again, holding up Flusterstorm and cast Delver. I could also, uh, I wish I had thought a little more. If I was gonna do that, I would have played Wasteland. That sucks. They, they skipped a bunch of dredges to get this land into play. I have protection from Cabal Therapy now, though. All right, I think I am just going to cast Delver and pass holding up Flusterstorm. Because I can, I can activate Stoneforge in response to Therapy now. God, I wish I had played Wasteland this turn. Mistakes were made. All right, there's a bridge. Still no Narcomoebas. Another therapy. So, I unless they drew a land on both of their cycles last turn, or both of their draws, which I don't think they did. I think they wanted exactly one land, and they wouldn't have taken the second natural draw if they had found land on the first. But if they do have, like, payoff spell, payoff spell here, then I could be in trouble. I mean, they could have just, like, nature's claim in hand, which... So I'm going to fetch for my basic planes, since this can't get Tundra now, I want to make sure I have Flusterstorm up if they do have Nature's Claim. Yeah, it was loose not getting Basic Island with the Flooded Strand. A missed opportunity there. Boom. All right, we played smart and got rewarded. Green mana is on the stack. Skadoosh. So now I can equip GTA, connect, and waste their only land. Uh, is there more stuff, or are they just waiting some more, thinking about conceding? Come on, Delver. Reveal Surgical. Flip Reveal Surgical. Nope. Island. All right. Yeah, it is kind of a feel bad, but they also skipped a lot of dredges to get that land. I'm still doing it. Get out of here. So they currently have one bridge in the graveyard. Uh, still only one bridge. No Narcomoebas. No Icarids. They've bricked pretty hard, and I'm not mad about it. All right, they conceded. All right, yeah, the, the act of GTA and a clock is, is usually good enough. All right, so 
Delver and Trunin Nemesis are very similar cards in this matchup, except one costs three. So it's possible I just want the the Delver back and shave a true name. And I think Jace can go and Force of Will can come in on the draw. Like I, I really need to survive that opening salvo. Alright, I'm gonna I don't think I could survive this match without peeing. I'm gonna use my two minutes to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. It's go time. Game three against Dredge for the 5-0. Well, I have Force of Will and some Ponders. I am going to keep this. Like, having Force of Will to survive their opening turn, like, you're... Your best case scenario in the opening hand is Force Will or Surgical, and I have the Force. All right, they mulled to six, so the slow dredge plan, if they're on it, just got a whole lot worse. And they stride to the bottom, so cool. LED, okay. Please cast Breakthrough, please cast Breakthrough, please cast Breakthrough. Yes, 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 yes. Don't have Faithless Looting, please. All right. Phase one, complete. They're on the slow dredge now. But we're still not okay. Not totally safe. I'm going to ponder. We really need a containment priest to just shut this down. I'll take a surgical, though. All right, so they have two dredgers, so I can't clip them off dredgers. I wish I could. Keith Capstick, thanks for the follow. Good to have you. So if they bring back this Icarate, I'm slamming Surgical, but I don't think they would ever do that. That would be so crazy. Oh my god. Oh my god. Can't believe they did that, exposing their only dredger. Did we do it? Do we get a concession right now? The old tilt concession? All right, let's look at their deck. What can they do? I mean, Breakthrough is still their best draw. Eluding is still good. All right, make sure I get this one first. They have no hand. They have no dredgers. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you only make that mistake once on Magic Online, getting the one in the graveyard, and I've, I've learned not to do that. All right, so Looting and Careful Study and Breakthrough are all pretty good here. All right, I'm satisfied with what I see. Just brick, draw nothing. All right, so if we get to untap here, 
Like, if they don't just break through right now and refill their graveyard, the Spell Pierce is going to pretty much cement the game. If, yeah, if they don't get a Dredger into the graveyard this turn, I'm going to Wasteland them and pass holding up Spell Pierce, and that should just shut the whole door. Oh, they're deep in the tank now. I hope they're not just freezing me out. It's the old tilt disconnect. Started with Vintage Masters. What a sweet set. What does their deck need? Steam Plugger Boss. Their deck does need Bizarre of Baghdad. Luckily, that card's not allowed in this format. Or I'd have a lot more sideboard cards dedicated to it. I can't believe they exiled that Icarid. That was crazy. <clears throat> like, I just kept a Ponder. I guess I haven't shown them st Surgical. I won game two without it. Yeah, Magus of the Bazaar <laughs> could do it, I guess. It's quite a bit slower than Bazaar of Baghdad, believe it or not. It actually uh, came up in the Legacy tournament I played last Friday. There was a Cloud Post player who ended up winning the tournament who was playing Magus of the Candelabra because he didn't have actual Candelabras. And he put it into play, and it got bolted. And instead of casting Emrakul, he just did nothing. Yeah, more McGill. The, the London Mulligan certainly gives Dredge a little, little boost, but Dredge is already like 95%. They're about to find Bazaar, and they go up to, like, 99%. <clears throat> I'm much more worried about the London Mulligan in Modern. Like, specifically Modern is where I I think that is the most busted. So I think it's super smart, too, that they reveal this Mulligan at the Modern Pro Tour. Like, if anyone's going to snap it in half, it's going to be the pros, and then we'll know for sure if it's a good idea or not. Though I think the mulligan, that mulligan is only good for standard and limited. Like, it is all upside. Not that it is only good in those formats, but it only does good for those formats. <clears throat> yeah, uh, though Mormigil, they'll probably still play Serum Powder. Like, I'm sure that's a big chunk of their percentage. Well, it appears that my opponent is just uh, freezing me out here. So I'm going to refill my drink. I'll be right back. Hopefully there will be game actions taken by then. Ba -na -na -na. My opponent did the math and determined that they lose. I've been linked to YouTube. This is dangerous to blind click. Salt is a way of life. <laughs> Obviously, the environment down here is all salt. The, the ceiling salt, the floor is salt, the walls are salt, and to an extent, the air is salt. And you breathe that in, and you can constantly taste the salt. Good contribution, Steam Plugger Boss. Thanks for that. <laughs> we got a trophy. Five legacy points. 16 chests. I think we should open these. Right, Ch right, chat? We like opening chests, right? Yep. Trophy hype. Taste the salt. That was a great video. I appreciated that quite a bit. So, let's see. I've had... One, two, three, four new followers and a bits donation tonight. So we're going to open five of these chests. If you want more chests, follow, donate some bits. Those are worth chests on stream. All right, one. Ugh, Brick City. Two. Oh. Three. 
Three. That's a card that goes in deck sometimes. Four. Commander All-Star. Five. Uh, Blacker Lich and Immortal Coil. So we have a uh, Immortal Artifact theme pack here. And 11's a weird number, so one for good luck. And Momer Big and 15 more points. 15 play points is about the ticks value if I were to sell these things. So I'm going to leave these 10 sitting right here. When we get more follows tonight, or more bits, more cheers, I will open more of these. But let's fire up another league. All right, chat, do we want to switch to Grixis or do we want to see more blue-white? I'll give you guys like two minutes to vote in the chat. I'm not going to set up an actual poll. Just, just type in your thoughts. I can switch to Grixis Delver or I can do this again. Here's the, the Grixis Delver. Blue-white is fire. All right, that's a strong endorsement for blue-white. I also agree that blue white is mostly fire. <laughs> All right, Belcher is not one of the options, Steve Plugger Boss. Thanks for showing up, though. <laughs> oh, D D and T. I I don't own the cards for that. I don't think they're super expensive. Like I would need basically Rashad and Ports and Thalia's to make that deck function. But I, I do not have any meaningful reps in with Death and Taxes. Like, I would play it embarrassingly. I would lose every match, and then we'd be in Tilt City. <clears throat> All right, eight points away from the, the Legacy Championship in two weeks. I think we'll get there pretty easily. Eight is not that many. All right. Let's refire. Bum, 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 beating Dredge, my, ne my lifelong nemesis. Uh, Amigro, I won a modern tournament with Death and Taxes one time, and it's a very different deck in a very different format. All right, got to screenshot the trophy for the old Twitter, the Twitter post. Chick, chick. All right, I'll tweet that out later. Re-league. Blue White Delver right back in. Did I want to change anything? Before I just refire instantly, let me think just a little bit. I think all the, this this list felt good. Two days it seems like just the right number. Yeah, I, I'm not going to change anything. I'm less high on the uh, sideboard true name nemesis than Harlan is. Oh yeah, Supreme Verdict. So, Supreme Verdict is a card that you can put in this deck. That's not a card you can play. Do I not own this card? I've played Miracles on Moto. How do I not own this card? All right, I don't own. The oh, I'm in other products. That's the problem. <laughs> There it is. Okay. Settle the wreckage is pretty loosey goosey. Like against death and taxes, where I need to clear out like their mother of runes and Phyrexian revokers, they might just only be actually attacking with a mirror and crusader or something. So if I bring this in, what goes out? I'm not as big on the sideboard true name emesis as Harlan is. Though it is kind of important to the transformational sideboard when you cut all the Delvers and Dazes and just become Stoneblade. You definitely want another threat. Uh, yeah, I, I just don't know what I would cut for the Verdict. Like if I was expecting a bunch of Eldrazi. Tommy, I told you like months ago to, to email me your information and I'll, I'll sign them and send them out to you. A 
just put my official stream email in the chat. Tommy, send me an email. We'll talk. You have the hookup. It's right here. You just need to use it. All right. Yeah, I, I don't think I want to cut. Like, Back to Basics and Supreme Verdict tend to be good in a lot of the same matchups. Like, Big Eldrazi, I'd rather have two Back to Basics. Mid-range Eldrazi, like, Stompy. I don't know, I really like Council's Judgment. Uh, no, I think I'm just going to play it as is. Like, GTA does a really good Supreme Verdict impression like in a lot of situations. So uh, I'm just going to leave it as is. Why mess with success? Harlan made top four of the open. We just 5 0 Fire back in. Save him 75. No fear. Only trophies. It's also 7.46 already. I'm done in an hour and 15 minutes, so we're not going to finish a league. But we'll we'll pick up wherever we leave off next week. Feels good coming back on a trophy, though. Defeating Dredge in the finals, no less. Dredge is, I think, the second most satisfying deck to beat in Legacy after Sneak and Show, in my humble opinion. Yeah, Tommy, Sword of Fire and Ice is like, uh, not next week, uh, Wednesday. Did I say next week? I'm back on Wednesday. I would like to play first. Did I go first in every match last league? I think I did. I'm going to keep this hand. It's full of permission. It's got a removal spell and a brainstorm. This is all, all we want. Yeah, I stream Mondays and Wednesdays. Uh, Amagro, uh, you have to have Jace, like, after you plow a couple Merit Lages, it's not really reasonable to win by damage anymore since you don't have Mentor, uh, but you're, you're gonna need to back to basics them, uh, are you playing, like, actual Stone Blade or this Delver Blade deck? Because this, this deck has Wastelands in it, which are really good. Alright, there's a Delver. Not upset to see that. I'll just get rid of it now. I would rather plow a Death Shadow, but you can't just let Delver beat you up while you wait for the Shadow. So this version is pretty strong against uh, Depths and Lands compared to any other kind of Delver deck or any other kind of Stone Blade deck. This one splits the difference just right in that sweet spot. So you basically need to like maneuver around their Merit Lages and then kill them with Jace. Right, a second Delver. A. All right, I'm gonna try to brainstorm into a third land here. Unfortunately, I have to get Tundra punished by the Arid Mesa, but that's life. All right, rewarded. I don't want Force of Will in this matchup. And Spell Snare is really good against him to Turok, but so is Spell Pierce. Spell Snare hits Bitter Blossom. They usually don't main deck that. All right, I'm going to put back brainstorm on top and hope I don't have to crack my fetch land just hope that doesn't come it doesn't come to that because I really want that brainstorm but I also want all these counter spells too all right they just have nothing the perfects I don't want force a will I'm just gonna hold off on the brainstorm because right now I can Counterspell and protect it with a different counterspell. All right, so I am going to draw the forest because I want to keep this fetch land up. But I get to brainstorm it away immediately. 
Knew that was coming. Oh, yuck. All right, true name is like everything in this matchup. They have no good answers to it once it resolves. They have a bunch of dazes, though, in their deck. All right, I'm going to shuffle away this Spell Snare now. Like, I think the cantrips are more important. And I am actually going to ponder right now. Like, that leaves me exposed if they jam something this turn. All right, what Do I want all these lands? All right, yeah, I can cast True Name with Spell Pierce back up next turn. Yeah, I'll take these. Hope I don't get Thought Seized right now. Oh, shit, shit, shit. I almost passed the turn without playing my land. <laughs> oh, whoops. Oh, yeah, I get to shuffle. I forgot that I hadn't played a land yet. So I, I get to shuffle away those other two lands I didn't want. That was perfect. Yeah, hopefully their hand is just full of Dash Shadows. Thoughtseize. I will Spell Pierce this card. They could pierce me back, and then they take my true name, and whatever. Brainstorm, okay. That's pretty aggressive. They must be looking for Force of Will. They're hesitating. Did they find it? Or Double Days? Or just nothing. All right, I'll take nothing. I'll always take nothing. Oh, who's the day's deck now? So they usually have an edict or two in the main. Oh, they did have force. They just chose not to play it. Smart. Oh, they forced pitching force. They were loaded up on forces. All right, let's hope they just spew all the Dash Shadows they've been holding into play right now. Hero Mag, sure. Delver, okay. Supreme Verdict. That card would be pretty good right now. Uh, I don't want any of this. I want Spell Pierce more than I want Days, though, so. Stubborn Denial. All right, Days, days paid off. They have one card left in their hand. There's not really a meaningful card that it could be. Just Plow is going to send them into the stratosphere as far as... Uh... And that Daze was awesome. It lets me shuffle away this island. All right, I don't want to wasteland them. That's not my plan. Yeah, so if the last card in their hand is Death Shadow, then it's like never getting cast. All right, Fatal Push is in their hand. Uh, Emigro, my next big tournament it appearance is going to be, I think Star City Cleveland is before Ni GP Niagara Falls. Like, I am coming to Niagara Falls, and I'm going to Cleveland. I'm, I'm not going to Philly, which is the only event this month. All right, Brainstorm, get me out of this. Thanks. Sucks that we know about this fatal push. Sorry, Amagro. I think Jate is the better one, though it's pretty close.
It's not because Philly is a hellscape. I like Philly quite a bit. It's because uh, I've done a bunch of traveling lately, and with the uh, Legacy Championship like series and whatever that's called happening right now, or happening this month, like that's my magic for the month. Like I, I'm going to be attached to my computer instead of attached to a car. All right, let's hope that was good enough. Okay, now I can protect this whole plan with Spell Pierce. That goes a long way. No Fatal Push, please. I'm just going to get rid of this Delver, because it's going to happen anyway. The cool thing about Stoneforge Mystic is it has one power, which means I'm not feeding the, the beast. Dead. <laughs> Steam Vlogger Boss comes with the best Twitch emotes. Big fan of what you're bringing to the table. Alright, Delver. Now I have two threats. I'm fairly certain at this point that they have at least one Death Shadow in hand. Alright, they gave up. Cha chow. This matchup's pretty positive, but they can totally cheese you. It's a thing. Alright. Just bring in every single removal spell. And true name nemesis. I usually cut days, but I don't want to. Are these all from Caleb's stream? Yeah, Caleb has a great stream. Best in the biz. All right, their, their Hymn to Tarox and Bitter Blossoms are going to come in, so I want these Spell Snares. Daze is pretty close to Force of Will in this matchup most of the time. Back to Basics does lock them out, but they can win with one land, and they, their deck is full of Dazes, so I'm, I'm kind of low on those. Bluster Storm is great. I'm also not afraid of Force of Will in this matchup. Like, normally you you cut some large number of these in these fair matchups, but uh, when they only have like 10 cards that actually win the game in their whole deck, you want as many answers as possible. I don't think I want Gideon. I mean, I do, but I don't think there's actually room or I don't think it's actually good. I need to cut one more of these cards. Maybe it is a daze on the draw. Yeah, so I brought in these three things and I took out, uh, I took, brought in way more than three things. All right, the fluster storms also came in. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. What was the other thing I brought in? Oh, the third true name. Yeah, okay. Yeah, this, this board plan makes sense now. All right, let's do it. Lands and spells, I'll take it. <clears throat> no basic island, which is a bummer. But I do get to jam ponder on turn one. Get a look. This hand is very susceptible to uh, him to Turok. So I'm going to do something that I don't recommend. I'm going to waste them. Like, having no one drop, like not even a cantrip, is pretty exciting. So, uh, like, my hand couldn't defend against a, a Hymn to Tarok there, so that, that was my line, to not get Hymned. 
Oh, and the old turn two death shadow. That's pretty good. Maybe I should have forced that. But I'll just draw a plow instead. All right. Thanks for hanging out, Grant. It, it was it was really nice to hang out with you all night. Still cheerleader, bits leader, Grat, 9717. Awesome. My current favorite in my heart. All right, so my best draw is towards the plowshares. I was just there for a GP, Grat, but uh, I will let you know next time I'm on that side of the earth. I just now considered for the first time that your name is probably pronounced G-Rat because that's pretty close to your actual name. And I've been calling you Grat all night. Though, what do you want from me? All right, so I'm not wasting again. That, that's, that's not the plan. I wish I drew a basic island. All right, time to ponder. Hope they don't have Wasteland in their hand. Hello, hello. All right, I'm gonna put the Swords to Plowshares on top so it's protected from discard. Like if they him me or thought sees me here, that plow is gonna be pretty important. What I really, really, really want them to do is jam a second Death Shadow. That's my vote for best play of the night. All right. <laughs> they weren't interested. All right, they top top that preordain. So after brainstorming, they top top to preordain. I'm sure their hand is just literal perfect right now. All right, I'm going to fetch now so I don't get pantsed by a daze. Get out of here. Oh, it just resolved. I didn't expect that to happen. A funny thing about the way cards interact is that Swords to Plowshares on Death Shadow always puts them to 13 because that's how addition and subtraction work. All right, so now I have Spell Pierce for a him or a Liliana or whatever they want to do here. And I have Celestial Purge for any threat they play, except Delver, which I mostly don't care about. I'll eventually care about it, but I don't want to. Like, it's not like a Gurmag or a Shadow that's actually like immediately threatening. Yeah, math is fun. It turns out that x minus 13 plus x equals 13. We'll have to have uh, Jarvis or some other math wizard or Matthias check that math for me later. But I'm pretty sure it's accurate. Right, opponents in the tank are deciding how hard they want to play around Spell Pierce. Like, do I jam Liliana or do I pass? So I'm not going to use this Wasteland for wasting purposes. Is this Gurmag? All right. And Ponder. Okay. Yeah, this Wasteland is now tapping for mana. Like, we're, we're out of try to waste them off stuff part of the game. Now I'm going to purge this fish. And hope they don't have days and also another card. Stubborn Denial and days would do it, but not one or the other. Or their fish just goes away. I'll accept that too. And now the third and final Wasteland is here. <laughs> Maybe we're back on the, the Waste and Out plan. <clears throat> Though I think, I think I'm just still not on that plan. I, I don't think it's good. Him to Tarak. I'll try to deny this. 
This would be a really good spot for them to fight. All right. Nope. All right. I'm getting hemmed here. I'm not going to force it because that's the same as getting hemmed. All right. Delver. All right. Here we go. All right. It worked. And we could force the next thing. So now we're in stupid mode, but their deck has way more threats than mine. Gotcha. Two of a kind. Didn't want them in my hand anyway. Stoneforge Mystic. Yes! Like I say all the time, chat, make sure that you're always just shouting out the name of the card you want to draw. That's the best path to victory in all matchups. I'm going to get the batter's call because they're at eight. And I don't want to dance around and remove all the rest of the game. Like, if they have a fatal push, it's time to cast it right now. Yeah, okay, yeah. So I just forced the dismember right now, and they could have played around it a little better if I got Jute. Baited me into some more stuff. All right, there are four. One batter skull hit. Oh, they're at one with that fetch land. All right, Stoneforge Mystic. All right, I'll take that. So they don't have a threat in their hand or else it would be in play already. And I can answer their next threat. I just hope I can do it before they draw an answer for my answer. Stoneforge Mystic? All right, they're F6. Which may or may not mean anything. But Batter Skull is a, a one-hit wonder right now. Diabolic Edict, you got me. They're at two. They're going for it. And they have to. Like they, they don't have a plan other than drawing cards and finding a threat. So we've already dealt with uh, one, two, three. We've only dealt with three threats, actually, this game. Him to Turok. Bummer. Okay, that hit the best two it could possibly hit for me. Now Jute's in play, and I, I'm still holding an answer to their threat. They don't know about Council's Judgment. All right, there's that. Come on, any creature. Three Nine Nemesis. All right, right on time. All right, draw Bitter Blossom. Don't draw Death Shadow. I could have been a little more patient with this Delver, but I, I'm okay just slamming while I think the coast is clear. All right. No Death Shadow. Yes. Any creature. Bummer. All right. So I am going to waste now. Like, I'm going to feel bad if I draw Jace, but I'm going to feel really good if they draw Liliana. Like, now that Daze is in my hand, keeping them down on mana is actually worth doing. I'm still wrecked by Death Shadow, though. Absolutely wrecked. Chose to shuffle. That's good. Any creature. Brainstorm. Brainstorm could be any creature. Brainstorm was no creatures. All right, so I can get rid of this days now and shuffle my deck. That's all good stuff. My hand just got better, which is what you want when you cast Brainstorm. <clears throat> Come on, true name nemesis for the win. All right. I'm in trouble to a creature. I'm fine for a Liliana or a Bitter Blossom. All right. We got one shot at this team. Creature. Any creature. That'll do. They are back at 13, though. <laughs> All right. Death Shadow just became a dead draw for them. Tie game. Everyone's at 13. 
All right. I don't want to spew two spell pierces into this brainstorm. I think we'll have more meaningful fights in the future. Liliana. All right. Perfect. Waiting for a target for that one for a while. All right. Any creature. True name nemesis. Let's go. Ooh. All right. Can't wait to get dazed right out of the game here. So I am going to wait till I draw a land on this Jace. I really don't want to get dazed. <laughs> And Jace also answers their creatures. Oh wow, they're out of lands. Shit. All right, I will fight over Jace here. I have one draw stuff to rule them all. Any land or creature is just bananas. Yes, we did it. All right, I'm going to leave the... <clears throat> I'll just keep the plow in my hand. I, I was going to say uh, I'll keep the fluster storm in hand and leave plow on top, but there's no reason to do that. Everything I'm scared of is a creature or planeswalker or enchantment. There's no instants or sorceries that are going to cast this turn that I care about. This is plow number four, by the way. The gang's all here. There's still two snapcasters in the deck to keep on plowing. And with the the two land or with three lands, Blusterstorm doesn't even counter a, a cantrip. <clears throat> Plow getting discarded here would suck, but Jace can bounce any scary threat. And and this is why this deck is cool. Uh, you have Delver and Days in your deck, but you sideboard into just this actual Stoneblade control deck. <clears throat> Bitter Blossom is the scariest thing they can do to me right now. All right, I don't care about Street Wraith. Oh my god. Japanese fetches and jaces, that's sweet. All right, so Flusterstorm's on top of my deck. <clears throat> what do I want to do about that? I can... Plow the Shadow, bounce the Street Wraith, and make sure it works with this Flusterstorm. Oh shit, I stacked it wrong. <laughs> <clears throat> Whoops. Alright, I'm going to draw cards instead. And I'm just going to draw a True Name Nemesis and close the door. <laughs> Rewarded. you plow you all right i don't have any swamps in my deck i might not even have to shuffle this brainstorm they're back to 13 because that's how this works thought sees all right you got me Right, Bitter Blossom. The race is on. Right, my top card is Brainstorm. I'm into that. Yeah, I'm just going to race him now. I, that, that's the whole plan. GTA makes Bitter Blossom pretty embarrassing. Diabolic Edict is the, the card I care about in their deck. There it is. Okay. Resolves. 
We still have Jace active. Jute is going to answer the next couple turns worth of fairies. Like, I'm not super worried here. <clears throat> I got... All right, there goes that. <clears throat> I got Ponder and Jace to see millions of cards this turn. Oh, that's still my upkeep. I got to draw a step before I have to think about anything. All right. I like Snapcaster Mage. It is both a creature and any spell in my deck. I'm just going to keep this because I'm set up. Like Snapcaster plus Spell Snare. Like they're just going to die to their Bitter Blossom. Like even if I don't play another spell this whole game, this GTA is going to answer these two fairies. And then they lose. I don't even need to cast the Snapcaster. I guess I could have won if I did, though, I, depending on what's in their hand. But I can take my sweet time and think about it. <laughs> there are 29 cards in my graveyard. That's awesome. 20 cards left in my deck. Get those two out of here. Now Force of Will is involved. Yeah, so I already have Bitter Blossom beat. Yeah, okay. <laughs> They're dead. Just completely run them out of threats until they lose. All right, I, I'm going to play one more tonight. Unless it's quick, then I'll do two. But probably one more match tonight. Still undefeated, 6-0 on the night. Pretty good showing. This hand is... Great if they're combo and terrible if they're anything else. MTG bot has informed me they were last seen playing Eldrazi post. And I'm going to keep this so I don't get chaliced. All right. Seems like they are, in fact, still this deck. Sorcerer Spyglass. I don't care about that. They can name Misty Rainforest if they want. Or they could just name Jace or Stoneforge. The great thing about blue white is you can answer permanence in the main deck. I can just have council's judgment to deal with this if I'm worried about it. Hey, Jay Serino. Oh, they're big post. Okay. Slightly scarier. Pretty sure I only have one Misty Rainforest in the deck. Right on time. So these are the kind of matchups where you're really happy that Delver's in your deck. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They could guess something stupid here. And bring her. Guess what's getting Force of Will right now. All right, Delver, let's do it. Flip, revealing, brainstorm, or ponder. Loaded Delta. Nope, that doesn't help me. I mean, it's a land drop, so it helps me in that capacity. The next thing that I have to force I'm pitching the Snapcaster to, because getting Jace on board is going to be a big deal. One, two, three, four, five, six. They have six mana, and it's going to cost them four life to use it. Oh, bummer. I pitched the days last turn. You got me, opponent. All right, so alternatively, I could pitch... All right, I'm going to pitch the Jace, cast the Snapcaster, and just beat down. Just straight-up Ambush Viper.
They have two Ancient Tombs in play. And I got to shuffle up this Delver if I want it. Uh, no, I don't want to shuffle that away, actually. Batter Skull. If Delver had flipped, they'd be dead on board. But if they cast any spells, if they tap their tombs, they're dead to a flip Delver anyway. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is Ugin. Oh, all is dust. Okay. Happens. Your three. Alright. Need a creature. Oh no. Punished. I'm not going to play the Misty Raid Forest because I can brainstorm it away later. Bummer. Back to five. They can tap their lands again. Cast Ugin, please. Dallas on one. Okay. I could have dealt them two damage by spell piercing that. Maybe I should have done that. Shit. Yeah, I could have put them to three. Alright. Stoneforge Mystic still just bombs this game. True Name Nemesis bombs this game. Uh, this deck is built to be pretty resilient against Chalice, but the game one plan still obviously is susceptible to it. All right, Grim Monolith back. All right, one away from Batter Skull. Don't do stuff. Untap. Fuck. All right, Batter Skull's dead. What's it like to have everything in your non-blue deck that doesn't do anything? Like, all of those spells were sequenced perfectly. Just drawn off the top. This matchup's pretty bad game one, though, for sure. Oh, Reality Smasher. Is that all? Are you sure? You didn't want to draw Ulamog? Alright, dead. Alright, so I might have won that if I had pitched the Snapcaster instead of the Jace. But they had to have exactly all his dust there to not lose. You know, I don't know. What are you going to do? Yeah, Reigns of Power would have been pretty good there. All right, back to basics straight in. Back to basics, Council's Judgment, Disenchant. All in the deck. Playing Stoneforge a turn early. But they're, they're not dead if I don't. Or maybe, I, I don't know, like... We certainly would have won that game if we just didn't cast Stoneforge, but uh, it has to be exactly all his dust. If they play, like, Reality Smasher instead, I, I'm going to wish I cast Stoneforge Mystic. They have a lot more big, dumb animals than they have Wrath of Gods. Okay, Daze is a pretty bad card. Spell Snare hits Chalice and Grim Monolith, but it gets locked out by Chalice later. I don't completely hate Spell Pierce. And on the play, I think I actually do want Spell Pierce. I want every Force of Will. Oh, explosives. I mean, yeah, that's fair, HC Fox. Uh, if you if you play like they always have Force, have all his dust, then it would have been right to hold back the Stoneforge. <clears throat> all right. I need to cut two cards here. Plow's real good. Delver's pretty good. Maybe cutting two Delvers is right. I'll cut a Delver and a True Name. Or do I just want the True Names out? Though, suiting up a True Name with Batter Skull is a, a way to beat a late game plan. Oh, they also dodge Endbringer. 
if I ever need to pivot in the late game. Maybe I'll switch it up on the draw, but I like these delvers on the play. Alright, here we go. Shit. Alright, this hand's fine. Uh, I'm going to bottom that. I, I'm going to... I want to draw lands. So I'm going to play Flooded Strand. I'll spell Pierce a Chalice if they have it. Or I'll just go to my turn if they don't. Nargoyles, thanks for the follow. Also, a freaking sweet name, by the way. <laughs> Nargoyles, I appreciate that. Guess what? New follower. Tro treasure time. Caves with Coilos. Modern All Star. Also, Battle of Wits. Modern All Star. All right. Not bad. All right. They kept six. And they topped their card. Two tickets. Rocks or point two tickets. Point zero two tickets. It gets better every time I talk. Alright, they have the chalice. The chalice can GTFO. The other day, I spell Pierce to turn one Chalice, and my opponent pitched two Spirit Guides to pay for it. I did not win that game, despite them going to two cards. All right, B-Skull, let's go. Don't care about Chalice anymore. They could Warping Whale this thing. That would slow me down. Draw Nuts here would ruin my life. All right, they get to name Stoneforge Mystic with this. But it still brings the beats. I get to brainstorm. I did get aped. Just completely ape smashed. Oh, Stoneforge Mystic, number two. Let's brainstorm. Okay, sweet. I can put back this Batter Skull. And this... Our GTA is castable, so I'll put back Batter Skull. And I, w I guess I do want to get rid of GTA too. Yeah, I'll, I'll get rid of the GTA and the Batter Skull, and I'll research up the GTA. Umazawa's GT. All right, let's see what tremendous BS they have for me now. Six mana. Is it Endbringer time? My hand's pretty well set up to weather through a storm of just monsters right now. Don't want to get thought not seared. All right, reality smasher is fine. Go ahead, smash reality. If I draw land, I'm not even going to remove this thing. I'm just going to get in with GTA. Land. Yeah, this deck is really popular right now. Harlan has been killing with it, and it's the type of deck that appeals to people. Like, people who like Stoneforge Mystic and Blue-White Control and Miracles appreciate the clock. And people who appreciate Delver appreciate that that package is in there. All right, let's draw land. Come on, opponent. A hey. Land it is.
keep the pressure on. The scariest thing they can do next turn, I guess they could all is dust, but what are you gonna do? Uh, like, another smasher doesn't kill me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They have seven mana. They could all is dust, but then I just untap Council's Judgment, Wasteland, and we're back to where we started. be a pretty lackluster all is dust all right now they're up to eight mana they could ugin i guess god i hope that's not a card in their deck all right backup smasher you're ready for this as long as they don't have a third smasher we're still fine actually i can gain eight so i don't actually even care about a third smasher I'm going to vote a Smasher off the island. Then I'm going to Wasteland in Eldrazi Temple. All right, so I'm effectively at 11 with the GTA. And I could plow this thing in an emergency. Like, I could just lose both plows to kill something. That messes with the clock a lot. Uh-oh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now is it Ugin time? Is it just nothing time? Aha, it's past the turn with no action time. Council's Judgment. Oh, that's so close to Council's Judgment. All right, so... And I get to attack with both, because if they if they block this one, I win with this one. So this is a free attack. Also the Abyss. They could dismember me and go down to two. But I can spell Pierce Dismember, so I'm pretty sure they are. They have to block this, go into Abyss mode, and just take two from this. Or take one from this. And next turn I can do the sweet play of pump this twice, move the GTA over, pump this twice, dodge any blockers. Because they're going to go to 7. If they tap Ancient Tomb, they go to 5. Plus 2, plus 2. And plus 2, plus 2. Get out of here. All oh, right. I forgot about the, the Grim Monoliths over there. JK. I can spell Pierce a... Uh, in Ugin. Or I can just let Ugin resolve and cast Snapcaster Mage and kill them with it. Because it can pick up the GTA. I don't really want to get Spyglass again naming GTA. That would that would be a bummer. That would ruin my whole plan. My GTA mind tricks. I appreciate that. <laughs> These, this is the sword you're looking for. Oh, another Ancient Tomb. Just what he needed. I guess Ulamog is pretty lethal, though. <laughs> Ulamog is bullshit. Emrakul, the promised end. My god. What does this even do? <laughs> uh, gain control of target opponents next turn. After that, that player takes an extra turn. Okay, and this has protection from instance. Bummer. All right, so... Here's Emrakul the Promised End. Yeah, I'm gonna do as much as I can to not die here. So I 
All right, so if I cast Snapcaster now, they can just attack it straight into Emrakul. All right, I'm gonna... I'm gonna fetch and then brainstorm. So I fetched first, so with the Snapcaster, I can hide something two cards down where they won't see it, but I will. Like if I find a Council's Dungeon and just bury it two cards deep, I win. I guess that's not true. Uh, I, I'm still in some amount of trouble. All right, so they could cast Stoneforge Mystic and fail to find. All right, so I'll bury the second plow two down. So all they can do is flood my board with creatures. Yeah, I, I'm going to gain a ton of life too, don't worry. Yeah, this 13 damage is uh, going to ruin my day. I can go to 12. <laughs> That's not quite enough. All right, so the good news is they can't... They can't take the uh, the Jitte off the Stoneforge Mystic. Oh, I guess that doesn't matter. They can attack and then kill the other one. Yeah, I am pretty dead here. And this Emrakul sucks. Yeah, that was that was a pretty good card for them to have in this spot. All right, they they are flooding the board with creatures. All right, they took the shuffle to look at my deck. I'm sure they're going to fail to find cuz they're smart. Well, Jay, the problem is they can attack right now, block that Stoneforge dies, and then they minus two, minus two the other one. But now that the other one's in play too, oh, they're just ramming my creatures into play. I'm going to get another turn because of the way they're doing this. And I'm drawing wild. Like, let's see if they know how to attack. All right, they, they figured it out. So they get to kill two of these creatures. And then I have two more. So I, I am going to be able to weather an attack here. And if I draw a Council's Judgment, I just win, I think. Yeah, this Emmy is wild, but when you're doing Cloud Post stuff, none of it matters. Well, they, all right. I guess targeting Delver makes sense when you have Ancient Tomb in play. All right, Council's Judgment for the win. Ho, 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 ho! Did we see that? Do we see this? Council's judgment for the win. I guess it's not the win. They do get another draw step. FOH. They shouldn't have shuffled my deck. I guess they probably should have, really. All right, they're at three. They can tap one of their two ancient tombs. The Grim Monoliths are, are in the graveyard. Did we do it? Did we beat Emrakul? Yeah. All right, one more game to play. Now we know about that thing. That sucks. You can counter that thing, though. It's not uncounterable like, like the bigger version.
I mean, plus Caracas is the only way to deal with counterbalance. I thought casting 10 drops was how you deal with counterbalance. So I like Gideon against Eldrazi Stompy, but this being Eldrazi Post makes it pretty wonky. Man. True name. Emrakul can still kill True Name because they're my spells that they're casting. Alright, Spell Pierce, the stock goes way down in these games because they're going to get a crack at casting Chalice before I have a chance to leave up Spell Pierce. I think Snare is just better in post-board games because I guess All is Dust is, is pierceable, but Snare always hits Monolith and Chalice even on like turn five. Uh, maybe I just have to play around All is Dust by not over committing. Though if I back the basics, then All is Dust is their plan to get out of it. I'm on the draw, so I'm going to play the spell snares. Maybe I'll split it. All right, let's go. This matchup's rough. Let's just back to basics them, get a layup. They saw my deck last game when they searched with Stoneforge, so they know that back to basics is in the pile. All right, I got to force the well. I have an out to Chalice. Got some ponders. Waste. All right. They really are committed to playing around that back to basics. Oh, Wasteland. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> it is a waste of a land slot. Da -dum -tsh. I actually just want all of these cards, but I don't get them all because of Stoneforge Mystic. I want Delver the least of all of them, though. So I can use this Ponder to cast Force of Will if I need to. I can ignore Chalice. Like, if they just have Chalice here, I'm going to let it resolve. Grim Monolith is fine. That was a really weird way to do that. Why would you do that? You just like spewed an extra mana for no reason? Okay, opponent. It's your life to live. Like, what just happened? <laughs> now you have a grim tapped Grim Monolith in play instead of an untapped one in your hand. I guess it does play around days, that's fair. Well, I'm glad they did that then. I'm glad there's no days in my deck. All right, so I'm going to jam Stoneforge. I'm going to get Batter Skull. I'm going to hold up this Force of Will. I'm going to play this Engineered Explosives on zero right now so they can't uh, Thought Knot it. It does give them an easy Spyglass, but that's fine. Their hand is super awkward over there, though. Get the batter skull. I am just going to play this. Because if they have a spyglass, now they have to choose between protecting their chalice or turning off the batter skull. Okay. Good thing you got another one of those. Whatever this is, I'm countering it. Karn. So that can make a 4 4 that dies. Or I can just counsel's judgment it out. This resolves actually. I'm totally fine with that. Please make a 4-4. Four, four. Please make a 4-4. Four, four. Bummer. Smasher and Spyglass. They can have 
Smasher? Yeah, they can have Smasher, that's fine. Somehow more worried about Sorcerer's Spyglass. So I'm going to waste here, because I have the Karn covered anyway. Let's just get this Batter Skull into play, and then start winning the game. All right, we know about Smasher in hand. I guess they could, like, wish for Spyglass here with, with the Karn, like the minus one. I would force it, though. Maybe I wouldn't. I don't know, this is like pretty tight. I mean, Divination's pretty good in this matchup, all things considered. So, they can name explosives here, but I don't care. Okay, you got me, opponent. Like, I'm attacking Karn to dead anyway. Arid Mesa might somehow be the name. I think you still name Engineered Explosives because you have to. Yep. All right, that's, that's fine. Totally fine. Attack Karn. Attack Karn. Karn's dead. I'm going to get rid of those spyglass. Oh, right. So I'm just going to get rid of the chalice then. Fuck the spyglass. Yeah, I, I want to keep my germ around. Good catch, chat. So this is on lock to this, but I had the judgment to get rid of the thing anyway. All right, they can smash now, and they have one unknown in hand. All right, do I care? Nope. Batter Skull races Reality Smasher. I take one a turn, and they take four. Like, I'll find a different answer to that. I want to cast my ponder. Different answers include this card. Skadoosh. And I can double block if they attack. So where and if I draw a land, true name just becomes a monster. Yeah, all is dust or Ugin. I would counter that too. Land? All right, didn't draw land. This is a pretty good card, though. Umazawa's GT. I guess I don't need to cast this. I have the Stone Forge in play. Violently, jealously holding on to this, this force of will. Uh, they're getting pretty close to. Yeah, I would also counter Emrakul, the one I can counter. All right, investing in the future over there. Tapping my island for black just for style points. Land. Ooh, that's not bad. Yeah, I'm totally comfortable with this. Discarding the Stoneforge Mystic. Equip this Jitte. So if they have Ulamog here, they can exile my two equipments. And they lose their... I can force the Ulamog himself. 
Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. They can't real Ember Cool me. Uh, small Ember Cool would kill my true name nemesis. That's still only 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. All right. How about only 14, LOL? All right. All right, Moto, don't glitch on me now. This is this is the moment. The moment we've been waiting for. This is why we didn't force that Reality Smasher three turns ago. And I believe they're just dead on board. 3, 4, 5, 9, 10, 11. It... 12, 13, all right, yep. D-O-B. Yeah. All right, so just 7-0 and on the night. We beat a uh, Emrakul, the promised end. So pretty successful night, completely undefeated. I'm going to finish up this league Wednesday and then play some more. Yep. And in celebration of Undefeated, let's open some more treasures. 20 play points. That's two bucks in the real world. 25, that's even more. And this standard staple. Go, go, go. 85, big money, no whammies. Quick in, sometimes in legacy lists in ancient time. Monastery Mentor, my pride and joy. Yeah, Pearl Lake actually was also in one of those packs. Oh, the mayor, Mr. Mayor. 45 points, also double resale value. I saw Bob Wong open a set the other day. I'm going to open a set. Ooh, look at this. Mythic Edition Domri. I think that's my fifth mentor, too, so that's just free money. This is so cool. I wish it was actually, like, worth anything or interesting. God, they need to get 8th and ninth edition out of these piles. This is so ugly. I don't even want to own this card. The Reaver. Oh, it's five ticks. Urza's Ruinous thing. And we finished with a Kytheon and a Spore Frog. Is that fat stacks on Moto? I know it's like real money in real life. E-price it, chat. All right, so what do we got here? We got Mentor. Yeah, that was number five. We're in luck. Oh, whoops. I didn't want to put all of them in. Okay, Mentor in. And then uh, Domri. I saw five ticks on that. I don't need that thing. Get out of here. All right, I think those are the only things worth dollars. Got to refill the ticks. I've been uh, spinning my wheels on the same, like, 13 tickets for a long time now. Uh, the Drown Catacomb. I'm going to keep that. Uh, I'm going to keep playable cards. Like, I know it's mostly standard, but some modern blue-black decks play, like, one or two of those. Like, the Fairies deck plays it, I think. Like, I, I keep any card that's remotely playable in formats. Oh, <laughs> Dragon later, Wreck. Look at this pile of stuff they're taking. Eight tickets for all these sweet cards. Look at this stuff. Where's the price by price breakdown? All right, so Jace Cunning Castaway. 18 cents for that. Domri, all right, that's big money. And where's the mentor? Mentor is two. Where's the rest of this money even coming from? I'm going to keep everything that's, like, literally worthless. Yeah, Sulphur Falls. Where where was that? Is that worth anything? Oh, three cents? Bummer. 
Oh, getting into the trials also needs to get out of my my dump binder because that's also a modern card. Oh god. All right. Bear with me, folks. Uh, Sulfur Falls I can keep. And Gideon. The stream is over if you want to leave. I won't feel bad for you. Bad about losing you. Just uh, trying to click these cards out that I want to keep. All right, Gideon. And Elspeth. That's not a playable card. This Jace is so pretty. I wish it was playable at all. All right, I won't miss the rest of these. Let me make sure I have enough Chainer's Edicts that I can sell them without ruining my Popper collection. Oh, I have a million of this version. I should probably just add two to this binder. Oh, binder's in use. Too bad. Sideboard card for a DTD against Omnitel. All right. I've been convinced to keep Karavek. So my definition of eternal playable is really, really generous. All right, I'm okay with the rest of this going away. Yeah, seven ticks up to a, a smooth 20. The, the advent of play points, whenever they did that, was really smart. Like, long ago in my, my day, everything was tickets. Like, packs and tickets were the only currency. So the, the play points, meaning you're not beholden to the current pack ticket value, is really nice. What is happening on my computer right now? Oh, my God. All right, somehow completing my trade just shut down Magic Online. I shouldn't be surprised. All right, I don't need six of these. All right, that it was a good night, everyone. All right, here's the... I don't want the play lobby. I want the deck. Nope. Nope. Yep. All right, so Blue White Delver. We're 7-0 and currently out... All completely undefeated on the night. Deck's real sweet. We've had, played up against a bunch of different decks. Beat Dredge, beat uh, Eldrazi featuring uh, Emrakul the Promised End, which resolved and we beat it. So the deck's got, got power, and I recommend it. All right, I'm going to check out who else is streaming, who we can raid, and then I'm going to sign out for the night. Oh, Jarvis is streaming. We like Jarvis, friend of the show. All right, I'm sending everyone over to Jarvis. I'll see you all there. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for all the new follows. Rating in three, two, one. Raid.